could please rise and join Kate Smith as she sings God Bless America. Dave Kate Smith has sung God Bless America, and we are set for the start of the game with Jill Gilbert in the nets for the Boston Bruins to the left on your screen as we bring you this first period. Well, Bernie Farrod is in his usual spot in the Philadelphia net, and back at his spot with the play-by-play -play microphone is Bill Hewitt. Okay, Bill. Okay, Dick. We're all set to start this first period, and boy, they're really hooping it up here in the spectrum, and we'll certainly be watching to see how Phil Esposito reacts in this game and it will pretty well tell the story. If the puck is out at center ice, it goes back to Orr. Orr shot it back in again. It then it goes into the corner, knocked it off the glass, but not out. Bobby Clark shoots it out over the line. That's Bill Flett being covered there by number 23, Al Sims, and they'll hold it there for a faceoff. 17,007 and there you see the position of the commentators here in the foreground and as the camera pans along on the two level press box the newspaper folk are up in the second row for the most part and it's the broadcast area now at the far end the French commentators. Okay Dick and we're back to the live action that's number 23 Al Sims of the Boston Bruins checked at center ice with Cashman and now the Flyers have got the puck in the Boston territory and it's back to the net for Bobby Orr. Orr a little more deliberate in this first period as to the last game to Cashman over the blue line. Cashman left it there. Kenny Hodge couldn't get to it, and it's knocked out over the blue line to center right. Or over to Sims. Sims at the red line. A long shot. That's behind the net into the corner. Along the boards for Rick McLeish, who's out there now, and the Flyers move, but Cashman's get back to cover. Wayne Cashman, and Ed Bannock goes down. Rick McLeish back of the net. He's watched by Cashman. It goes to Simon Nole. Nole is hooked by Cashman. The puck into the blue line and out. Nole knocked it back to Ed Van Imp. Philadelphia Flyers with Lonsbury at center. He's checked by Orr. Orr going back with Phil Esposito. Over the line. Dropped it for Busick and it went wide of the net. Played by Ed Van Imp. Right on the board. Boston keep it in there. A shot off the stick of number 17. Bobby Schwartz right in front of Schwartz. He shoots. Oh, a great save by Bernie Clark. Rick McLeish back at center. Over the line, going in with Nole. The pass was broken up. Not out. McLeish shoots. Big blue and Nole. Trying to get the rebound. Nole right front shot. And Rick McLeish's drive was just stopped. Spots comes back, and they're really moving in this first period. A hard 
shot. Caught by Brock. Back on the fire. Up the center right. Broken up by Carol Badney. Badney knocked it back into the Philadelphia zone. And they're moving at a blistering pace here to start the first period. Ross Lonsbury. Up to McLeish. No score. First period. Going in. And it's and McLeish and Badney were high sticking one another. And it was called back on the offside kick. Alan Smith involved now with Andre Dupont. They arrived on the scene after the initial get together involving Carol Vadney and Rick McLeish. I don't think we're going to have penalties. And the faceoff will come back outside the Boston line. Here we see how it all began. As McLeish came in, the whistle had gone at this point. The offside call made as Vadney combs McLeish. Nole on the right side in that last line out there for Philadelphia. He's taking over from Gary Dornhofer, who is out for the balance of the series because of a separated left shoulder. He was injured Sunday afternoon. Bill Clemont in uniform for Philadelphia for the first time since the fourth game of the New York Flyers semifinal. You notice Al Sims out there, Bill. He did not see any action at all Sunday. He started That's with right. the war tonight. Well, a little strategy on both ends. And, of course, Dornhofer being injured dictated a change for Freddie Shiro. As the Bruins at center ice, unable to get past the blue line. The Bruins move it in, it's offside. Then Andre Savard gets into a mix up there with Kinvichek. They swing in at each other. Andre Savard and Boris Kinvichek. Well, what do you say, Bill? A couple of high-spirited rookies going at it. We pointed out Sunday, and they still want to get at one another with the linesman in there now. So this one isn't over yet. It looked as though they had them separated. But Kindrachek and Savard continued. We mentioned on Sunday that the game was devoid of anything like this of a major nature, and a lot of people said, well, the Flyers don't have to fight to win. They played so well, but here we are with a bit of a hassle here a minute ago, which didn't develop into anything, and then this one, which did. And they are still leaning and grappling, and as you see there, weakly you know, in this case, punch. An oddity, really, Dick, because uh, they started out playing it wide open, and it looked like they were really going to stick to hockey. Zaleski and Dallas Smith at the top of your picture just a little bit more than cautiously holding one another away from the scene of the battle. They are still holding one another. Everybody has disappeared. We have uh, another one starting over there, Dick, with Zaleski and right. Dallas Smith. This game is coming to you from the Philadelphia Spectrum. and 43 seconds here in the first period. The time of the major penalties handed out Andre Savar of Boston, R.S. Kindrachuk of Philadelphia for fighting. And we have a scoreless game. It all started with that stick Kindrachuk to Savar who replied with a swipe along the ice and then they dropped the sticks and gloves and away they went. And this early in the game where you've got lots of strength. Offsetting major penalties, of course, and Kendra Chuck and Savard getting five minutes each for fighting. We're in underway again, and Dallas Smith with the teams at full strength to Carol Vadney, number 10. He's being watched by Bill Barber. Terry Crisp is out there at center, and Zaleski on the right side as the puck goes to Bernie Perrot. Perrot knocked it back of the net, hit it by Ed Van Imp. O'Reilly gets it back to the blue line. Vadney took a shot that's wide of the net. It goes back of the goal. It's the Bruins trying to center it into the corner. The Bruins trying to get it out in front, broken up. There's Piper getting up the center. He's all down. There's going to be a penalty there to number 18, which 
Ricky LaDuke. LaDuke hits the gate for holding. That's a good 11. Using youngsters here at the start this game that they didn't use on Sunday. LaDuke got into the game only very late in the third period. Sims, as we pointed out, didn't play at all on Sunday, and he started tonight. This time, it's LaDuke with his first appearance as he sent it to Riley and Marcotte. Dropping Barber in center ice, and he is penalized. Holding is the call. 3.21 is the time. So the first power play opportunity of the hockey game falls to the Philadelphia Flyers. Just checking the power play statistics, we'll look at it a little differently. Looking from a minute standpoint, Philadelphia's had an advantage for 15 minutes and 58 seconds worth of playing time so far in this series. They have scored one power play goal. The bench areas are directly below us as we look at the game from our broadcast booth position. Philadelphia Flyers are starting at full strength. Richie LeDuc with in the penalty box for the Boston Bruins, and that, of course, gives the Flyers their advantage. Bill Esposito trying to rag it, lost it to a case, then it was broken up and knocked down the ice by Al Sims, and it's Barber back there for it for the Philadelphia Flyers. No score, first period, 16-21 remaining. And it's Bobby Clank. Look at him move to his own blue line, up the center ice, over the red line, checked by Phil Esposito. Esposito came from nowhere there to knock him off the puck, and he's got it again. Then he's jammed into the boys by Bladen. Laid back to Orr. Orr goes skating all the way back into his own territory, wasting time with a minute and 19 seconds left in the penalty. Orr shot it to the blue line, but not out. Black gets it over in front for McLeish, and it was broken up. A nice play by Al Sims. Dick. Good play by Sims. Of course, a play like that by a visiting player always draws a roar from the home crowd. Phil, I'd have to think that, judging from what we saw here just a minute or so ago, Phil Esposito's work has to be encouraging to the Bruins. There's a back of the net isolated look at Sims as he sweeps down in front and gathers that puck in to cause this faceoff in the Boston zone to the right. 15-50 remaining to play in the first period. There's no score, and this is the fourth game of the Stanley Cup Finals. And we have a big faceoff in. Boston Territory, and they got the draw this time, and Esposito chopped it out over the blue line. Layton had the puck taken away from him by Phil Esposito. He's over the line, he shot it into the corner, it goes back of the net, and Bill Barber picks it up there. Barber gets it over for Rick McLeish. Rick McLeish, number 19 to center, his pass for Clark, back to McLeish. And as Dick mentioned, Rick McLeish standing in front, deflected the shot from the blue line, and it's 1-0 Philadelphia. Here's a chance for Cashman. He gets it into the corner, shot across in front by Vadney. Bill Esposito knocking it to the corner. Cashman after it, so is Vadney. Vadney tried to center it. Hodge playing at the blue line, and it shot down the ice. Going back for it is Dallas Smith. He touches it, and that's icing called against the Philadelphia Flyers. Tom Bladen had been in a little bit of trouble on the power play and had been getting a ride from the fans. He lost the puck to Esposito, but he lets it go. There's a back of the net look. McLeish, that's the kind of a play that hockey players practice. Sometimes when a practice is over, they'll stay out and they'll try that deflection, knocking it out of the air. And McLeish came through. That's the first time the Flyers have scored the first goal in this series. It was only their second shot of the period. The Bruins have had three in Bernie Perron. Back to the live the action here now in the circle to the left of Bernie Parrott. Bill Esposito facing off. It comes back to Fadney. There's a shot, and that was knocked down in front. It goes over to the fire wing and knocked out by to the blue line. But out. Dallas Smith to Cashman. Trying to roll it in front. Philadelphia break it up, and Zaleski headmans the puck. Schultz over the line. Going right in. He should score! tells me that they are cheering louder for this goal by Dave Schultz than any goal the Flyers have scored in this building in a game that we've been here. There's how the scoreboard is reacting as two quick ones for Philadelphia and the Flyers take a two to nothing lead. Dallas Smith was trapped on the play. He had gone in deep on that Boston rush. So here is Schultz with only that day back. Clemmy was to his left. And he lets it go, and it beats Gilbert as it gets through the legs of Vatney up front. 
And Seleski draws the assist. Two nothing, Philadelphia. Five thirty is the time of that goal. Schultz from Seleski and Van Ips. Offside at the Philadelphia line. Somebody fell. It went into the Flyers bench stick. I don't. You can't see it from here, of course. Somebody might have been clipped by the puck. That's why the whistle went as it went up into the bench area. A lot of people looking. Players looking. We can't tell as we, as Bill pointed out, our view is blocked. Checking the goals. It was McLeish from Bladen at 4:40 on the power play. And then Schultz from Seleski and Van Imp at 5.30. Two goals in the space of 50 seconds of playing time. And somebody, I think it was Bobby Clark, seemed to be the one who got clipped by that puck. They're over at that bench looking at Clark. Morant comes over to check with the coach, Freddie Shiro, but just how happy he's going to cut. I mean, Clark has been just slightly cut. I think he's all right. With 14-19 remaining in the first period, it's two to nothing for the Philadelphia Flyers. At center ice, number 19 for the Boston Bruins is Greg Shepard. And they formed on the left side, and Bobby Schmatz on the right. But Philadelphia have a two-nothing lead in this first period. Shepard trying to cover his man at that. Along the board was Simon Olay, number 17, and he holds it there for a faceoff. Dick, uh, they're really flying. Two goals in three shots for the Flyers. Kendra Chuck in the penalty box. He is sitting out a major along with Andre Savard of the Bruins. I don't think you could follow a goalkeeper on those two goals. That's quite a shot that Dave Schultz fired. Boy. There's Shepard getting a backhand, and oh, he just missed the corner, and it was knocked down for his effort. The puck is still in. Philadelphia territory back to the blue line. Sims shot it around back of the net. Rick McLeish has it there. There's going to be a penalty for holding to the Philadelphia Flyers. With 13.51 remaining in the first period, the score, the Philadelphia Flyers 2, the Boston Bruins nothing. Flyers penalty number 14, Joe Watson, two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty, six minutes, nine seconds. Joe Watson, the Flyers, two minutes for holding. Watson of the Flyers in the penalty box. He has been penalized for holding here in the first period. The time 6.09. So he joins Kendrachuk. Here's another look at Schultz's goal. As I pointed out from the angle where it looked as though it went right through Vadney's legs and Gilbert had no chance. Bill, that puck was in the net before Break the Boston move. goaltender moved. That's what is known as the perfect shot. You know, while we mentioned Gilbert, I guess it had to happen. There is a sign on the other side of the rink, right by, right up over his head, really, where he is now, and it says, Gilbert is a dash, expletive, deleted. I guess it had to happen. Well, Bobby Clark is back out on the ice, so he appears to be all right, and he's going to take his regular turn now on the killing this penalty. He's out there with Billy Barber, number seven, and there's the players in the penalty box. There's two of them for the... Flyers and one for the Boston Bruins. And we're all set now with 1351 remaining in the first period. Two to nothing for the Philadelphia Flyers. Bill Esposito, Cashman, Busick, Orr, and Badney. This is the first chance for the Boston Bruins. Busick back to Badney. Badney back to Busick. Busick centered it, went by Esposito. Orr lets it go. There's a bit of a fencing going on between Cashman and Jimmy Watson. Cashman and Jimmy Watson. Well, it's more than fencing now, so this could be a rather lengthy evening. And referee Wicks is going to have his hands full. Cashman and Watson were being penalized as they got sticks up. And then after the referee had given them the penalty signal, they went at it without their sticks and gloves. Now and they are trying to get past 
Bergman back, and now the fans get going on that one. They really didn't have all that much to cheer about here in Philadelphia as far as the fight was concerned. And now they are starting a chant, out, out, out. Well, Cashman was tossed out of the game in Boston the other night, the second game, at the end of the second period for the third man in row, and it hurt the Bruins very badly in that game. Now, with Phil Esposito acting as a one-man convoy, he heads toward the penalty box and no further damage is done. We'll await the official announcement on the penalty call. He may have uh, shoved at uh, Neil Armstrong, the linesman, and that may cost him 10. I will see. Number 12, Wayne Cashman, and Flyers penalty to number 20, Jimmy Watson, each two minutes high sticking, each five minutes fighting. Going to be minutes, seven, six minutes, seventeen seconds. Six, seven, ten. Jimmy Watson, the Flyers. Each two minutes high sticking. Each five minutes fighting. The first three games of this series produced a total of four major penalties. We've had four here tonight in the first six minutes and seventeen seconds of the game. And for those trivia fans in our audience, I mention that it's the first time the Watson brothers have been together in the penalty box in the playoffs. Leads me to mention that Brian McFarlane will be chatting with their father during our second intermission. You see this cameraman with the Texas Ranger hat or whatever you want to call it. He's right in the penalty box. He's the fellow with that handheld camera that wanders around and gets you all of those excellent close-up shots that we're able to show you. With the uh, minor penalties and the majors, they remain the same. Fi uh, Boston at full strength, and it's Phil Esposito with Ken Hodge and Johnny Busick with Vadney and Orr. As we get set to go, the puck is dropped. It comes back to Orr. Orr centered it for Esposito, and it's knocked down the ice. Going back for it is Carl Vadney. Vadney, number 10, back of that Boston net. Fires are shorthanded. Bobby Clark up to do a bit of fort checking, and Orr has it. Bobby Orr off the boards for Esposito and Hodge. Over to Busick. Back for Esposito. Esposito couldn't get his shot, and Ed Vadney shoots it down the ice. Adney goes back with 13 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first period. 2-0 Philadelphia. Orr covers Terry Crisp. Then Kenny Hodge around for Phil Esposito. Esposito starts out slowly. Up to his own blue line. Up at center. Over on the left wing of Busick. Busick over the blue line. Busick getting in front. He shoots it. Roll his score. Phil Esposito from Johnny Busick. Makes the score two to one for the Flyers. Phil Esposito, one of the most talked about players after the game here on Sunday, but in a different way for Phil because a lot of it was the critical aspect, and he was basically benched in that third period. And here is the replay. Fine play by Busick to get it in, and with Esposito standing on the edge of the crease, he made no mistake. Perron had no chance. Esposito scored to look at it. A big play by Johnny Busick. See. Barber trying to push Hodge offside, did not succeed. Busick into Esposito with a perfect pass and a perfect redirection of the shot. And the Bruins are on the board. Okay, Dick, and from the faceoff, it's Philadelphia in possession. Number 11, Zaleski at center, just shoots the puck over the line. Badney knocked it back out. The teams are at full strength. Back goes Dallas Smith, shot it off the board. Zaleski then is bumped by number 18, Richie LaDuke. And that's where play ends as Seleski and LeDuc were bumping one another, but nothing developed. Face off to the left. Uh, Jill 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 Bear. Dick. The goal was Esposito from Busick and Hodge at 7-12. Both teams now with a power play goal tonight. Seleski was beaten to the puck by Marcotte, and Dallas Smith back of the Boston net takes a look. He has LeDuc on his left, passes in turn to Vadney on his right. Vadney is watched by Bill Clement. The puck goes over for Dallas Smith, up over the blue line. He overskated the puck, gets it away again. And it's Dave Schultz this time after it. Schultz goes in, back of the net. He's bumped by O'Reilly. They go to the boards. They start to rough it up. Dave Schultz has O'Reilly, and down goes O'Reilly. Schultz gave O'Reilly a headbutt when he had the Boston player dead to rights. On a play which normally wouldn't produce this kind of a thing, but tonight it has, and this one has been a fight-filled first half. 
of the first period. And O'Reilly now wants to get it. Schultz, they went at one another in Boston in the second game. And Wicks is ordering O'Reilly to the penalty box to avoid anything more in this particular situation. But those two, long evening, Dick. <laughs> those two may get together again before it's over. Usually the pattern of the, for the Flyers in their games throughout this playoff year is that this sort of thing has developed in games after they have lost the previous outing. But they've won the previous two in this series, but now we are getting the penalty box as a scene of a lot of the action. And there goes young Mr. Schultz. The Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Philadelphia Spectrum. Boston penalty to number 24, Terry O'Reilly, and the Flyers penalty to number 8, Dave Schultz, each five minutes for fighting. Time of the penalty, seven minutes, 56 seconds. O'Reilly at Boston, Schultz to the Flyers, each five minutes for fighting. Kermed along with Bill Yud speaking to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, where in the last five minutes and 17 seconds, we've had 38 minutes of penalties and three goals. Here is the start of this one, and watch Schultz there. You see him with the headbutting routine as O'Reilly has his arms wrapped around him, and Schultz was giving him that action head to head. Well, that's three sets of majors in his first seven minutes and 56 seconds. Now we're back to the hockey game. Rick McLeish out there with Lonsbury and Simon Olay. And for the Boston Bruins, they have Greg Shepard playing at center. Schmatz is on the right side. And number 14, Dave Forbes on the left. Or on the defense. And he's playing out there along with Darrell Edestrand. Greg Shepard straight down the ice at center. A long shot. That was off the stick as Forbes was dumped by McLeish. Schmatz goes after the puck. Lonsbury gets it to Nole. Nole back of the net. Nole takes a look. Dropped it back to Ed Van Imp. Around it comes to Joe Watson, number 14. Watson gets it up at center ice for Nole. A beautiful play around Sims. And he gets it over the line. Joe Watson then knocked it into the corner. Lonsbury goes after it. Orr is there first. McLeish is tripped. Play goes right on. Up to center ice for Bruins. Over to Schmatz. Schmatz takes his drive and he drove it wide. And here's a break for the Flyers now. Nole and McLeish. Up for Rick McLeish, too far. Into the corner it goes, or after him. And they hold it against the boards for a faceoff. Pretty good job by Bobby Orr to get back. He was well caught on the play. McLeish had to slow up just a bit. I think he was afraid of going offside at the line and didn't get the break as Bobby Orr came from way down in Philadelphia territory and finally has the face off. Or is it more shots on goal than anybody in the Stanley Cup playoffs? And on Sunday, he played 35 minutes and 34 seconds. That's quite a lot of hockey, Dick. Well, we have 10 minutes and 57 seconds remaining to play in the first period, and the Philadelphia Flyers are leading the Boston Bruins 2-1. to one. At one point, they led 2-0, only to have Esposito come through with a power play goal at 7-12. And we're at the 7.56 mark was when the last major penalties were handed out. O'Reilly and Schultz. Let's watch for this faceoff. Clark against Esposito. And Clark wins it. There's a shot wide of the net by Andre Dupont. Bladen lets one go. That deflected wide. And Joe Bear covers up on the rebound. He face off to uh, Wicked. The Clark Esposito combination on the faceoffs. A lot of talk about that. This is the 68th time in this series that they have faced off, and the margin is now Clark winning 49, Esposito 19. He won that one cleanly, and it led to the shot by Blayton, which didn't miss by much. Gilbert covering up as it came off the board. And we have another one in the Boston zone with Esposito against Clark. This time they're going to be waved out. Hodge against Bill Flett this time. Bill Flett gets the puck in front of the net. Esposito shot it back to the goal. Dallas Smith bringing it to the blue line. He's watched by Tom Bladen. Then Dallas Smith knocked him down. Phil Esposito watched by Clark. Gets over the line. 
DuPont knocked them into the boards. They all pile in there, but it's still Esposito starting to show some aggressive style in this game tonight here at the Spectrum. Well, in that game the other day, of course, the third period, Esposito was, for all intents and purposes, benched. He played only three minutes and 12 seconds in the last period and only 57 seconds in the final 12 minutes of the game. He had had one shift of four minutes and 17 seconds alone in the first period when he played over 10 minutes, close to 12, I believe it was. Pace outside the rule, so we'll just wait and see what happens. There it is, Timbering right in front of that Philadelphia net, waiting on the wing. Cleared it out, but he cleared it into the crowd in doing so, and we'll have a face-off in the Philadelphia Flyer territory. Now, controversy over where the face-off will take place. The ruling is in the circle to the right. The Flyers, the fans here, don't like it. There they are. Now Esposito won the draw, then lost the puck. Torres Kinderchak, then a bit of a cross check by Phil Esposito. Esposito and Zaleski came up with a high stick. Zaleski seemed to have been caught with a high stick as well. But Esposito was the first one to get nailed. I think you can tell that Esposito did not want to get involved. Flyers were going after him, but I think Zaleski was combed by Dallas Smith, and it is Smith who Zaleski is arguing at now as he is being steered by the already overworked linesman, Neil Armstrong, uh, with his partner, Glo Bichar. He is putting Zaleski in the box, and Esposito is drawing a penalty. Now, I don't know if Smith is going to get a penalty. He is still standing, hands on hips, as you see him, number 20 yapping at Seleski, who is rather vocal in the penalty box. Oh, Seleski is really wild in that penalty box, and now his teammates are Kindrichuk, you see, talking to him there. Seleski's father is attending the game from Regina, and I was having quite a chat with Don prior to the game, and we were talking about the Regina Pats, his old junior team, and our congratulations to Bob Turner and the Pats for their Memorial Cup victory over the Quebec Rempar in the deciding game in Calgary and Sunday night a fine win. Penalties for Boston number seven, Bill Esposito, two minutes for slashing. Number 20, Dallas Smith, two minutes high sticking. For the Flyers, number three, Tom Bladen, two minutes for elbowing. And number 11, Don Seleski, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalties. Nine minutes, 43 seconds. Once again, Esposito of Boston, two minutes slashing. Dallas Smith of Boston, two minutes high sticking. Tom Blade of the Flyers, two minutes elbowing. Don Seleski of the Flyers, two minutes roughing. Nine, four, three the time. We have a total of four more players in the penalty box. Esposito Almost and like Smith. A regular bench over there, Dick. Seleski. Let's see, there we go, there's the penalty box. First the Flyers oh, in there, and then the Bruins in there. And let me see, Seleski and Bladen. Yes, two of the Flyers are in there. Here's the replay, how it started. First, Bladen and Esposito. They swing now. Seleski, number 11, tries to get at Esposito. You get involved. Watch Smith come in from behind, and that's how he gets involved. And Smith gets a penalty for high sticking, and there you see on the left of your screen the stick high coming down in the direction <laughs> of Seleski. So to recap this one at 943 here in the first period it's Esposito for slashing Seleski for roughing Smith for high sticking Bladen for elbowing minor penalties all and oh yes the score it is two to one Philadelphia that's uh, 12 penalties now Dick in this game so far we haven't reached the halfway mark in the first period and you haven't got enough paper if this keeps up <laughs> well they'll be playing four aside that's for sure and it's Greg Shepard at center with Orr on one side and Sims on the other Dick. This is not the penalty box area. These are the team benches, but it's almost even Steven as to the number of players that either side. Play underway, Greg Shepard was covered up off by Joe Watson. It comes back to Orr. Orr takes a weak shot that was stopped by Bernie Perron, and Bobby Clark goes back to the net, starts out. Two to one, Philadelphia, as he comes to his own blue line, up at center over the red line. Gets it for Ed Van Imp. Ed Van Imp over on this left side. He just shoots it in, and it goes into the corner. 
Sims knocked it back in the net, and it's picked up by Bobby Orr. Orr starts out with a pass to Shepard. Shepard over to Sims. Sims up at center with Shepard over the line. They're closing in. Sims trying to fade. Orr gives it to Shepard instead, and Shepard is knocked down by Ed Van Imp. Bobby Clark coming down on Orr over the blue line. Still has it. Tied to center, he did. What's in a shot? And Gilbert stopped that, and Orr goes after it. 9.22 remaining in the first period. Orr over the blue line. Takes the shot. Oh, and that hopped over the glove of Bernie Parrott, but it was wide of the net. Rick McLeish coming out now for Philadelphia. Up with Dupont. Over the line. Fakes a shot. Still has it. Let's it go. And that just missed. Back to Joe Watson. Takes his shot, and that's stopped by Orr. Orr ahead to Shepard. Shepard up at center alone. A long shot, and that's going high into the crowd. And we have 8.49 remaining to play in the first period. Two to one for Philadelphia. For those of you whose computers may have broken down, I can tell you that we had 46 minutes in penalties in less than half of the first period here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. 32 seconds remaining on penalties involving the four players who were sent off with minors at 9.43. Mention the Regina Pats win in the Memorial Cup. Congratulations as well to the Barry Flyers who have won the Allen Cup for 1974 with their victory over the team from Cranbrook, British Columbia. Andre Savard has come out at center now for the uh, Boston Bruins, number 11, flanked by Orr and Badney for the Philadelphia Flyers. It's Rick McLeish with Andre Dupont and Ed Van Imp. Teams are playing four aside. Batney gets back into the play, and they're getting set to drop the puck as Ed Gridlin says something over the boards. Goes to Batney over to Orr. Orr shoots it back for Batney. Batney gets it back to Orr. Orr moves up and to Savard over the line. Savard getting set, takes the shot, scores! Andre Savard! Into the bottom left-hand side of the net, and it's all tied up 2-2. That was a great play by young Savard. He just manipulated perfectly, and Perron had no chance. You could see the wheels turning as Savard, after taking the pass from Bobby Orr, swung around, and that was a big move against the check from McLeish. Patney screaming on the play, and he drilled it low. And found the target. Great play by young Savard, who's had quite a first period. He was involved in the very vigorous fight with Kindrachuk. And now here he is, as we look at it again, letting that shot go that ties the game. 2 2. Here's a quick chance again for Bobby Schmutt. A backhand off the stick of Savard, rather, and it goes to the corner. Picked up by the Flyers. Andre Dupont after it. He's up there with Lonsbury, and it been him stolen by Savard. Savard of the Bruins. Knocked it back into the corner as the Philadelphia club have, with Perron out of the net. It goes into the corner, and now the teams are back at full strength with the return of the two that were in the penalty box for Zaleski, along with Bladen, who gets it in. Covered by Badney, Zaleski in the corner. Back it comes to Andre Dupont. Dupont was checked by Savard, and Orr breaks away. Orr with Phyllis Pozzito over the line. Orr stops, shoots. Oh, and Bernie Perrant got his pad in the way of that. Don Marcotte to Phyllis Pozzito as the Bruins have taken a new lease. And they've come from 2 0 to tie it up 2 2 in this first period. Goes out and down the ice to center. Zaleski goes after it. Dallas Smith knocked it out. Bill Clement knocked Badney down, but Badney cleared the puck right out of Van Imp's stick. Van Imp brings it back for Philadelphia, flipped it in. It goes to the corner. Marcotte touched it and knocked down with a high stick, and it's going to come out. Well, the teams will be going at it again on Thursday night, game five at the Boston Garden. Hockey Night in Canada will be there to bring you all of the action, and our broadcast time will be 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Game five, the Flyers and the Bruins Thursday night at the Boston Garden. Seven twenty remaining to play in the first period, and it's a two-two tie. Harold Fadney at the blue line, up at center, his pass knocked down. Bill Clement is clapped. Puck goes over on the far wing. Fadney was tucked by Bill Flett and Terry Chris. Back to Bill Flett. 
coming from the side. Oh, and Dallas Smith covered that, and then flat Craig Badney, and there'll be penalties there. Carol Badney limping, and he was became very suddenly became upset with flat Badney far removed from the scene right now as he limps around there you see him number 10 for the Bruins favoring his left knee leg or ankle we can't tell but he's going to the penalty box along with Fleck. Plus the penalty to number 10 Carol Badney two minutes for cross checking. Flyers penalty to number 21 Bill Fleck two minutes for slashing. Time the penalty is 13 minutes three seconds. Badney and Boston two minutes cross checking. Fleck the Flyers two minutes for slashing. Back to the live action, and there's our penalty box. And it's a busy place. 13:03, the time of the Vadney Flett confrontation. Vadney for cross-checking, Flett for slashing. The calls. So they are 14 five now. Dick. The replay, Bill. I think we're going to see it anyway. Flett on the far side, and he becomes involved with Vadney after Smith had made the save. Now there's Vadney's cross-check. Wapo. There is Flett slash. It cuts Vadney on the back of the leg. Teams playing five aside with 6.57 remaining in the first period. The puck to Bill Barber. Bill Barber being watched by Marcotte and Dallas Smith. Barber still has it, though, along the board. He's given a bump. Clack tries to dig it out. He's jammed there by Richie LaDuke. Now then, they get into a bit of a mix-up again with Richie LaDuke propping Bobby Clark against the board, which he didn't like, and we nearly had another fight. But Woodland continues to use the youngsters who did not see much action here on Sunday. Sims on defense and Leduc number 18 who's been taking a regular turn. And now Schultz arrives it's a kind of an ovation. And he takes over from Barber. Big face off again in the Boston Territory. Score tied 2-2. Clark against Leduc who went down. There's going to be a penalty here. The two of them. Clark and Leduc. I think, Bill, that Wicks has decided that enough's enough. You pointed out, you know, you pointed out so often on Sunday, the Gilmore routine. He was calling them so close. Well, Wicks has got some problems on his hands here tonight. So he's not hesitating. Here is the replay of what happened between Clark and Leduc. Now, who's getting the penalties? They both are being penalized on the play. So. Boston penalty to number 18, Richie Leduc. Two minutes for holding. Flyers penalty to number 16, Bobby Clark. Two minutes for slashing. Final penalties. 13 minutes, 16 seconds. The Duke holding the for Boston, slashing. Holding. Bobby Clark and the Flyers, two minutes for slashing. It just took 11 seconds to get another pair of penalties, Dick. The goal scorers so far, McLeish and Schultz for Philadelphia as the Flyers quickly took a 2-0 lead. But then Esposito and Savard have scored for Boston and the game is tied 2-2. Now we got a problem with the timekeepers. I think the they're going to get some more room for the penalty bench. <laughs> oh, no, a few of the spectators. Uh, the clock has become a bit fouled up. Uh, the sentence against number 18 should read two minutes, and suddenly it reads 247, and somehow Carol Vadne has disappeared from the penalty clock. He should be shown number 10, 147. He went off with number 21. Who has 147 left? If you can follow me, <laughs> I think that's got it straightened out. And what has to happen now is that 18 at the top becomes 10, and the two becomes one. Have your attention, please. And that's the way things the are going. And the spectrum penalty to number 10, Carol Badney, shows two minutes 47 seconds. That's incorrect. The time remaining one minute 47 seconds. 147. Now you straightened out the scorekeeper. We have had a total of 18 penalties called so far. The NHL Stanley Cup record for penalties in one period, 24. Now, now then, the Boston Bruins and the Philadelphia Flyers play four aside. Or with Dallas Smith and Greg Shepard. And for Philadelphia, Ross Lansbury, Joe Smith and Ed Van, Joe Watson and Ed Van Imp. 
Over the line for Greg Zephyr. Joe Watson got him with a good body check along the boards. Lonsbury is in there after it, and Joe Watson comes up with it. Watson coming up the center ace over the red line, over the blue line, fakes a shot, or watches him. Watson still has it, though, keeps it in, knocked it to the corner. He and Greg Shepard go after it, and Orr comes up with it back of the net. Orr down to Dallas Smith on the left wing. Phil Esposito comes over the board. Dallas Smith getting in front. He's knocked down by Ed Van Epp. Went to the boards, and Lonsbury comes up with a puck, number 18 of Philadelphia. Trying to get around Phil Esposito. Phil Esposito checked him. Ed Van Epp and Dallas Smith again after it. This time it's for Orr as Van Imp broke the stick and Lonsbury comes up with it. Lonsbury down to center ice with DuPont over the line. DuPont rolled it in front and Phil Esposito was there. Esposito for Orr. Got it around on the boards for Phil Esposito. He's hit by Lonsbury. And bleeding. Watched by Orr and Phil Esposito, and it goes to Dallas Smith in the corners. The Flyers are starting that check, check, check on Boston in the latter part of this first period. 5-12 remaining. A long bouncer that Bernie Perrant handled very easily, and now Rick McLeish has it, number 19. Rick McLeish, he's hit hard, knocked down. Up the ice for Tom Bladen. Al Sims knocked him down. And the puck is held there as we have players coming back out. Coming up during our first intermission, a special feature on the Flyers' brilliant captain, Bobby Clark. Brian will be talking with Greg Shepard of the Boston Bruins. And Donnie Marsh will be along to analyze this first period of play. 4.56 remaining, 2-2 the score, and the penalty box not quite as busy as it has been. We have. Clark and Leduc in there, each with 12 seconds left to serve. They're the only ones left in the box right now. Well, the teams will play five aside for four with four minutes and 56 seconds remaining. And as Dick mentioned, 12 seconds remaining in their penalties. And then we will get back to full strength again. It's been quite a while. Up for Badney. Badney takes a long backhand. That bounced to Bernie Perrot and Tom Bladen picked it up back of the net. Bladen with Billy Barber. Now we're back at full strength as Bob Clark comes out and also LaDuke, Philadelphia, center ice, led by Clark over the line, a quick pass to Chris. Chris roll right in front of the net and Barber just failed to put it in from in front. Back for Terry O'Reilly, number 24 at the blue line, up the center right. Oh, and he just missed a terrific body check from Andre Dupont. It goes back to the goal, into the corner, Savard after it. Billy Barber can't get it out. He's jammed against the boards. Batney keeps it in for the Bruins. Rolled it through. Savard the backhand. And that was stopped. He's got it again. He tried to center it. Tom Bladen around for Terry Crisp. He gets it out. Marcotte is there. He flipped it. But it's picked up by Don Zaleski. O'Reilly and Zaleski. With O'Reilly going after Zaleski. And he's going to get a penalty for charging. O'Reilly. Boston. O'Reilly gets the penalty. Bill, you pointed out that O'Reilly had sidestepped an intended check from DuPont. Had DuPont, DuPont connected, that would have been a check of the series. Two minutes for charging. Time of the penalty, 16 minutes, 10 seconds. O'Reilly of Boston, two minutes for charging. Well, the announcement is charging, and that's the reason why. So the Flyers get a chance at a manpower advantage situation. 3.50 left in the first period. Greg Shepard comes out. He'll be up front killing the penalty along with Don Marcotte. Moore and Dallas Smith will be on the fence. Okay, Dick, we're all set to go. Greg Shepard will take this face off with Clark. Clark looks for the face off. He gets the draw, goes back to Jimmy Watson. Jimmy Watson then gets it over on the right side and Bladen brings it up. Bladen over the line and it's offside. Rick McLeish who is shoved over and it's called by the linesman. And we'll come outside the Boston Bruin blue line. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are sitting at home marveling at Bobby Clark and saying, look at him win those faceoffs. Going into this game, in this series, Clark had faced off 109 times and had won 72 of those faceoff situations. Boston Bruins come up with it this time, and it's Orr knocking it down into the Philadelphia territory and going back is Jimmy Watson, number 20 of the Philadelphia Flyers. Back of the net. 
Starts out with a pass to Bobby Clark. Bobby Clark goes to his own blue line up over the red line at center. He crosses the blue line, still has it, trying to center it, and it's picked up by Dallas Smith, who lost it to Lonsbury. Lonsbury faked the shot, then knocked it into the side of the net. Bobby Clark knocked his man out of the play. Rick McLeish got it back of the net. Clark was knocked over. Jimmy Watson keeps it in. Watson, back of the net for Lonsbury. Over it goes to Bladen. Bladen can't get it out. They go to the boards, and they'll hold it for another face-off with 2.58 remaining in the first period and 108 remaining in the penalty. What an exchange between Clark and Dallas Smith. First Clark knocked Smith down, then Smith went after Clark, and I'm sure the partisans on both sides figured a penalty could have been called one way or the other, but no penalties resulted. Esposito taking over now at center ice for Boston. He's out there with Cashman. And Sims, who's seen a lot of ice time tonight, belatedly sent out from the Boston bench, and he takes over from Dallas Smith. Big face off here in the Boston zone. Bobby Clark fights for it, had it off to the side. Henri Dupont had moved into the corner. It goes there to Lonsbury. Lonsbury back of the net. He's being watched by Phil Esposito, gets it loose. Still has it, coming from the side. Right in front to Jimmy Watson, and he couldn't get his shot away, and it's knocked out over the blue line to center ice. Goes to Bobby Clark. Bobby Clark gets it ahead to Dupont. Dupont just flips it in. And going back is Orr. Off the boards and down the ice. The puck goes all the way to Bernie Perrot, who gives it to Simone Ole. Ole at, at down the left side. At center. Lots of speed. Trying to go around Orr. Goes in back of the net. Into the corner. Back it comes to Andre Dupont to roll over his stick out the center ice. Comes over to Joe Watson. Joe Watson up for Simone Ole, and it's over the glass into the crowd. Teams have played 17 minutes and 54 seconds here in the first period. And of that time, they have played only five minutes and 45 seconds worth without somebody in the penalty box. Well, here are some of the signs. Again, the spectrum is bedecked, although not quite as heavily, Bill, I don't think as was the case on no, Sunday I, afternoon. Right. But this is the kind of a thing that they put up around the rink here in Philadelphia. 16 seconds left in O'Reilly's penalty as Cashman shot the puck down the ice. It ends up in the corner, as you see, going way around to the opposite side, which wastes time. Comes out to center. Badney mixing it up with Bill Barber. And Badney along the boards gets his elbow up. Cashman gets in there. Barber's there. They're right. Well, we'll see what happens. How many more do they need, Dick, to set the record? No, I don't think they've got a minute and 47 don't seconds. I don't think they're going to make it there, but five short. But then again, one never knows. The one thing about the new long hairstyles hockey players are featuring, like Barber there, you can really tell when they get zunked one in the noggin because, you know, the hair flies. And some wag says that it's a good name for a fellow with hair like that. Barber. Well, we'll let that one just stay right where it is. <laughs> I was going to mention Cashman. He's minus a little. <laughs> 147 to go in the first period, and it's been a long one. And the score is tied, 2-2. A long shot off the target by Dallas Smith. It's behind the goal. Andre Savard of the Boston Bruins. 2 O'Reilly who takes his man to the boards, and there's Dave Schultz in there as well, but nothing happens. Ten and a half left in the period. I don't know if we'll see him again, Bill, here in the first period, but you have to say that so far, Phil Esposito has responded to the criticism and to the challenge, and he is playing much better hockey here tonight he than he has featured, I guess you might say, since all oh, back to the first half of the first game of this series, and the Bruins had a good start. Mark comes out now for the Philadelphia Flyers, take over at center. Chris Schultz and Flett on the wings. One minute and 30 seconds to go in the first period. They're lining up in that circle. Clark gets the draw again into the corner. Ed Van Imp has it back of the net. He's being watched. The puck goes. Joe Watson went after it. It's broken up. It goes back of the net. Clark after it. Bobby Clark starts out now. At his own blue line. Up the center ice. Up over the Boston line. Knocked it to the far wing. Into the corner for Flett. Flett tried to center it. And it goes to Marcotte. Now we have a fight in the back. Now they stop. Clark laid off. The puck is cleared in front of the net, and it goes over to the far wing. We nearly had a fight, but it didn't develop. 
Now it's Bill Flett at center. He shot it over the line, stopped by Vatney, brought out by Savard. Savard with 50 seconds. He's checked by Clark. There's their sticks up a little high. There in front of that Boston bench. Then Schultz starts swinging and shoving him right at the bench. Dave Schultz and Andre Savard. Well, Schultz's aim in his hockey life is quite obvious, and he is fighting with Savard and then took the opportunity to throw a punch at one of the bystanders, Carol Vadney. So Schultz's purpose is obvious tonight. Whether or not it's going to do his team any good in the long run remains to be seen as he heads again to the penalty box. He's also scored a goal. McLeish and Schultz have scored for Philadelphia. Esposito and Savard for Boston. And when there's been action on the ice, and there's been some pretty good action, Bill, especially of late, we've had a total of four goals, and it's 2-2. Here is how this last one developed. Savard has been playing a very aggressive period for the Bruins. Fine show by the rookie. Becomes involved with Clark, and they just all piled in along the boards in front of the Boston bench. That's when it started. To number eight, Dave Schultz. Each two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalties, 19 minutes, 15 seconds. 19, 15. Schultz and the Flyers, each two minutes roughing. Roughing the call, Schultz and Savard. They just don't want to let that penalty box get empty. Uh, they played about, oh, I guess roughly seven minutes, full strength in the rest of this period. Not a pretty Not long a one, strength. over an hour. So Savard gets himself <laughs> put back together play, again. Uh, you do something to me <laughs> on the organ. And I'll do it right back. <laughs> well, Savard's having quite a time getting that number 11 jersey of his squared away. Oh, he doesn't seem to be too much of a hurry to do it. Now Wicks comes over and says, come on, let's go. Do that for sort of thing in the penalty box. Well, you know, it's, you need a belly, I think, nowadays. He has decided, Savard, to go to the Boston dressing room, I guess, to finish dressing. And he would be in the penalty box for the balance of this period in any event. 45 seconds remaining. And that's the two-minute penalties to Schultz and Savard being called. 21 penalties, three short of the Stanley Cup one-period record. No, exactly. 45 seconds remaining in this first period. And the teams will be playing five aside as they have the roughing penalties. Schultz and Savard. Bobby Clark with DuPont and... They're going to have to make a change here because they got too many men on the ice. Bill, these penalties bring the total to an even hour. 60 minutes worth. Broadcast booth area here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The team's tied 2-2 as we get set for the start of the Here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the team's tied 2-2 as we get set for the start of the second period. The hockey world has been deeply saddened by the untimely death of Wayne Mackey, who passed away Sunday in Vancouver. A member of the Canucks until he was forced to retire because of surgery for a brain tumor, Wayne was only 29. I'm sure hockey fans everywhere join us in extending sincerest sympathies to the Mackey family, to his brother Chico, and particularly to his wife Beverly and their children, Stephanie, who is three, and Christopher, who is two. Well, Dick, uh, certainly Phil Esposito has uh, made his presence felt in that first period. And we're just getting set now to start the second period with a score tied 2-2. And it's Orr going back for it, Clark after him, and it goes back of the net into the corner, shot around on the boards, and it comes back out over the blue line at center ice. Here's a chance for LeDuc over the line with Orr. He dropped it back to him. Orr takes his shot high and wide. The rebound picked up by Bill Flett. Bill Flett shoots it out on the left wing, up to center ice. Comes Jimmy Watson of Philadelphia over the blue line. Jimmy Watson shot it right on the net, Joe Bear. And going into the boards rather heavily was Bill Flett. LaDuke and Flett fighting for it. They jam against the boards, and it's finally held long enough for a face-off. 37 seconds remaining in the penalties. Schultz and Savard. McLeish and Schultz scoring for Philadelphia. 
to give them a 2 nothing lead in the first period, but Phil Esposito and then Andre Savard replied for the Boston Bruins. Shots on goal in the first period. The Bruins outshot the Flyers 11 to 9. And we might point out that there's still players in the penalty box, Schultz and Savard, serving their roughing penalties that came at 19. 15, so that means they have a minute. But now they have about. That clock is all fouled up again. Yeah, they've changed right. the time on those penalties. Schultz and Savard in the penalty box. The score tied 2 2, and we're facing off in the Boston Territory. And they draw, goes to the Flyers. They shoot around back of the net into the corner. It comes along the boards. Ed Van Epp is there, but he couldn't keep it in, and they'll come out. A difference in coaching philosophies came to the fore in the off day yesterday here in Philadelphia. The Flyers held a full scale practice at the University of Pennsylvania Arena, with only Bobby Clark, Ed Van Epp, and Bernie Perron excused. But for Boston, it was an optional practice, and only three regulars showed up. Ed Van Imp with a long shot to Jill Joe Beer knocked down, and it's Bobby Orr back of the net to Greg Shepard. Greg Shepard dropped it to Orr. Orr's pass over here on the left wing brings Al Sims to center with a pass off the back of Schmatz. And then Ross Lonsbury takes his man into the boards. Jimmy Watson has been carrying the puck a lot for the Flyers in this game. Tried to hit Mick McLeish. And it's Bobby Schmatz of Boston bringing it back. A 2-2 tie. Schultz is on the ice. So is Savard. Orr shot it wide. Greg Shepard went after the rebound. Andre Savard keeps it in for the Bruins. Here's the shot and it going high over the glass into the crowd. Boston getting a big game out of young Savard, number 11 tonight. He has scored for the Bruins, playing well. And there is the goal judge. At the end, I believe, to our left as we look at the game. And there is a goal judge's eye view as he, the camera swings around. Bernie Parron in the nets and on down the ice. Okay, Dick, and a few frequent changes now to start this second period. Of course, the first one was an awful long one because of the penalties. Here's Schmutz with a drive. That's high, and it was over top of the net. Number six, Andre Dupont gets it out to center ice. Not there by some smart, and he shot it in again, along with Badney, and it's back of the net. Now then, the Flyers back up in their own end, and they're starting the rhythmic clapping. And here's Rick McLeish coming over the blue line, coming up over the red line at center. He's got Lola on his right. And it goes by Dallas Smith into the corner. No lay, and then takes them to the boards. And this seems to be the, the strategy, Dick, to start the second period that we uh, just go in and, and try and forecheck in there then. Dallas Smith has been in the penalty box on occasion tonight, playing Phil as, aggressive, as aggressively as I have ever seen him. Hopefully you don't, I don't notice him in a role like that. Rick McLeish facing off. Lost the draw to Greg Shepard. Goes back of the net, Dallas Smith's pass right in front of the net, and McLeish just missed it. Back come the Bruins, led by Schwartz, over the line. Schwartz trying to go around Joe Watson, and he couldn't. Then Vadney moves up, sending it out in front of the net, he's missing with a backhand. And the Schwartz, he shoots, oh, he missed the open net. He missed the open net. Bobby Schwartz cannot believe it. Quiddlin, surprisingly, uh, laid into Schmatz publicly and rather vigorous five times into the game. Double the 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 Flyers, thank you. Game out of him yet. Well, Schmatz has played better tonight, but what a chance he had, and he has missed. Well, Dick, you can't get any closer. Okay. First. Puck is cleared into the Boston zone. They get it out again to center ice, and it went by Phil Esposito, and it's over to Andre Dupont. Back to Tom Bladen. Bladen at the blue line. Gets it up to Bill Flett for Clark, and he's way offside inside the blue line. The crowd's still buzzing about the chance that Schmatz had and failed to connect on. Another fellow who was basically benched in the third period the other night was Kenny Hodge, number eight. Gore is tied 2-2, and the puck goes to Orr. Orr at center, a pass for head for Wayne Cashman. Cashman and Hodge going in together. Bladen is knocked over by Cashman. 
It goes into the corner to DuPont. DuPont shot it around on the boards. It's stopped there by Phyllis Pizzito. And the Hodge. And he shot it back, and there was nobody there. Al Sims had moved in in front of the net. Orr has to go back for it, and he goes back to the net. He's watched by Bill Flat. Orr to Phil Esposito. Esposito at his own blue line, up at center. Up over the blue line. Left it there for Sims. Sims cutting in from the wing. There's a shot. Oh, and that hit Cashman. It's off the boards for Bill Flat. Flat out with Schultz. Schultz just missed the pass. It goes over the red line. Orr back to get it, and it's icing against the Philadelphia Flyers. And we have 16 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the second period, and the score is tied 2-2. Bobby Orr going to the bench. In the first period, he was on the ice for 12 minutes and seven seconds. Phil Esposito played seven and a half minutes, while Bobby Clark played seven minutes and 20 seconds. There's young Mr. Clark, the youngest captain, I think, in the history of the NHL when he was appointed this for that role here in Philadelphia. Boris Kindrachuk out there with Selesky now on the forward line with Barber. There's a shot by Badney, and that goes to Perron, who's way out of the net. Up it comes for Barber. Barber at center ice, gets it over to Kindrachuk. Kindrachuk takes a look, try to get it back. Mike Cott knocked him down, but Jimmy Watson was there to shoot the puck into the Boston Territory. Badney's jump by Kindrachuk then against the boards, and it's Badney bringing it out. Harold Vatney up the center, number 10, over the blue line. Fakes a shot, still has it. By the center and then mid Van Epp had him covered. Billy Barber starts out now for Philadelphia. At his own blue line, up the center. Over for Zaleski. Zaleski's shot is deflected over the glass into the crowd. 15 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second period, 2-2. Mentioning face-offs in that first period, Boston 120, Philadelphia 14, and the Oren Esposito matchup saw them on the draw against each other six times, and they finished even Stevens three apiece as far as who won the draw is concerned. A bit of a line change here right now. They're not mad at Fred Shiro. That's a reference to the fact that he said he'd go to law school if they won the cup, and then he told Brian at the start of the show that that's not so. Back of the net for Richie LeDuc of Boston. He gives it over on Sim. Back to LeDuc. LeDuc going down the ice. Number 18 takes, takes a shot. Fell. Jimmy Watson goes after it. Jimmy Watson of Philadelphia handed it back. Lost it again. Gets it back. And then shoots the puck down the ice. There's a race for it. Going after it is Al Sims. And it's picked up there behind the net by Orr. Orr gets it over on the left wing. To number 14. A Forbes, who was hit, Cashman goes back to cover up. Cashman dropped it to Sims. Off the boards, the Forbes too far. Ed Van Epp picks it up for Philadelphia. Over for Bill Clement. Then to Chris. Then in to the corner for Pellick. Number 27 up there for the first time in the game. And Joe Bear shot the puck into the crowd. He didn't mean to. He was trying to get it out. Starting at center ice now for the Philadelphia Flyers. Rick McLeish, he's got Lon Lonsbury on one wing and no way on the other. The puck comes back to J Joe Watson. Joe Watson's covered by Johnny Busick, but he gets the puck loose, centered it across the goal mouth. Lonsbury leaves it, Andre Dupont a shot, and that is wide of the net. Here's Nolay trying to get a shot. Nolay's got it again along the boards, and then he's covered, and the puck goes loose. Picked up by Greg Shepard. Greg Shepard into the corner. Picked up by Carl Vadney. Nice move by Vadney. He's dumped by Rick McLeish. Gets up again. Still has it. Knocked it out to center ice. And Lonsbury to Joe Watson up to Rick McLeish. Rick McLeish of Philadelphia shoots it into the corner. The rebound off the board. is shot by Joe Bear to the blue line and out. Joe Watson has it again at center. The score is tied 2-2 in the second period as Schmatz fed it to Dallas Smith. Dallas Smith gets away from McLeish. Up the center, over the blue line. Trying to get a shot away. Oh, he rolled it right in front of the net and it's stopped by Nolay. Nolay comes back. 
A pass up at center, broken up by Greg Shepard. He lost it. And Lonsbury over the line. A pass for McLeish. Lonsbury tries it again, and it goes back to the net to Vadney. Lonsbury was knocked down. So is Vadney. There's going to be a penalty here holding against the Philadelphia Flyers. And the Bruins will get the advantage in manpower, the first penalty of the second period. And it took them six minutes and 19 seconds to get somebody to the penalty box here in the second period. Rick McLeish. Rick McLeish, two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty, six minutes, 19 seconds. McLeish, two minutes for holding. Scoring chances not too prevalent so far in the second period. Schmatz with the big one when he had the open net. Bit of a tough angle. And he did not score. Now the Bruins on the power play, and they have arrested Phil Esposito out there as McLeish sits it out for the next two minutes or less. Esposito, Cashman, and Hodge. Bobby Orr is on the ice. Orr had three shots on goal in the first period to lead the Bruins in that department, and McLeish, the top man for Philadelphia, with three. All right, Dick, and we have Clark starting at center now for the, the killer's penalty off for the Philadelphia Flyers. There you see on number 16, Bill Barber's out there as well. Ed Van M and Jimmy Watson. Boston Bruins having the advantage in manpower. Six men to five, and they have Esposito, Cashman, Hodge, Orr, and Vadney. Goes back to Carl Vadney, and Vadney turns, gets it over to Orr. Orr just waits, gets it to Phil Esposito. Esposito at the red line at center. He goes over the blue line. Esposito closing in for a screenshot, and he shot it high, and watch the rebound. Came right out in front, Fox got it. Fox going down with Barber, one man back. Fox shoot. Oh, and Jaber stopped that, but it was called back on an offside to Barber. That was a strange bounce off the glass on the shot, which Esposito took and missed, and it caught Carol Vadney. As he had moved into the slot in front of the Philadelphia net, that gave the Flyers a chance with a two-on-one break, which was washed out by the offside call. A minute and 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to McLeish. 13-21 remaining in the second period, which is moving along a lot faster than the first period did when we had the 21 penalties. Esposito with Cashman and Hodge, Orr and Badney. The puck is dropped. See who comes up with it. The Bruins do, and it's Badney starting out at his own blue line. Badney tried to get away from Clark. Sees Esposito, takes the pass. The Esposito crosses the blue line over to Hodge. Hodge's shot was deflected wide of the net. Barber comes up with it for Philadelphia and decides to shoot it down the ice. And Orr goes back for it. Bobby Orr. A quick pass to Phil Esposito who was going the wrong way, but now he's turning on his way down the ice towards the Philadelphia territory. He's around, dropped it back to Orr. Orr lets the shot go, and that was just off the side of the net. Philadelphia cleared out the center ice. Vatney has it. Vatney cleared it over to Orr. Orr turns again. Or I had the Cashman. Cashman closing in, and he shot it way wide into the corner of the opposite side. Ah, it's then for Cashman. Or it moved up. Back to Cashman. Cashman tried to center it. It's out in front of the net. Knocked back to the corner again, and Jimmy Watson gets it for Philadelphia, and he shoots it down the ice. Going back for it is Batney. Batney, number 10 of the Bruins. Now he starts out. Rick McLeish has 28 seconds left. In his penalty in the 2-2 tie. Adney gets it over for Hodge off his skate. DuPont shot it, but not out. Phil Esposito. Then for Hodge. Gets it right in front by the setup. Cashman. And that was knocked down by Bill Flett. Bill Flett hits it down the edge. And Bobby Orr goes back for the puck. Back of the net. Watched by Terry Crisp. Three seconds left in McLeish's penalty. He's getting ready to return. Bruins come back, led by Orr. O'Reilly was dumped by McLeish. Orr's pass for Cashman. Comes back to Badney. He rolled it in front of the net. Cashman took a whack at the hole. He shot it wide of the goal. And Terry Crest into the corner. Jim Joe Watson after it. O'Reilly tries to dig it out. Chris had him covered. They fall. It's right in front of the net. DuPont then gets it to McLeish. McLeish and Flat now together. That takes the pass over the line. There's the shot, way wide. And it comes all the way back to center ice. Now then McLeish turns again to flat. Flat lets it go as Javier stopped that. Kendrachuk is taken to the boards by O'Reilly. They try to get a tangle up, they can't. It's back of the goal. Philadelphia trying to center it. Off the glass, but not out. 
Joe Watson kept it in, and Orr goes back to the net. Orr, up for O'Reilly. It's cleared out. Bill Esposito, a long pass for Marcotte. Marcotte, into the corner. It's back to the net, and Zaleski has it. Zaleski just shoots it out to center ice as the Bruins are changing on the goal. Andre Savard is out there. Darrell Ennis fan shot the puck in wide of the net. Goes around on the boards to Zaleski. Zaleski gets it to the blue line. Kindrachuk can't get it out, and Savard knocked it all the way back down to his own territory to Dallas Smith. Dallas Smith moves up at center. Dallas Smith. Over to Darrell Ennistrand. Back up on the right side. Here's a chance for the Bruins. Will O'Reilly takes the shot, and Joe Watson fell in front of him. Dave Schultz back of the net. Marcotte stopped him. Back to Dallas Smith. He took a shot wide of the net, and the rebound goes to the corner. Marcotte is covered. Tries to get it loose. He does to O'Reilly. O'Reilly back for Savard. Savard trying to get in front. Goes back of the net. He's dumped. And Zaleski comes up with it for Philadelphia. Head to Kinderchuk. He's poked by Edisman, and the puck is cleared in by Philadelphia around on the boards. And O'Reilly shoots it down the ice for the Bruins. And it'll be called back for icing with nine minutes and 24 seconds to go in the second period. in Philadelphia, Simon Nole's nickname is Smoke. Well, you figure out what this means, but that's one of the many signs hanging here in the spectrum. 2-2 the score. Gary Crisp, along with Bill Flett. All lining up with Clark as well. He's moved over to the left wing. Chris taking the face off. Clark tried to get to the puck, but it went to the corner instead, and Orr shot it around on the boards and down the ice. Ed Van Imp going back for it. Van Imp Touches it before it crosses the red line, and Jimmy Watson gets it in the corner. He just gets rid of it to center ice. Or waiting for his teammates to get on side, controls the puck to Greg Shepard. Shepard then gets it over to Al Sims with a long shot that goes around back of the net into the corner. Bobby Schmatz, who missed a glorious chance, trying to center it. It's loose. They finally fall with Jimmy Watson underneath, and that means we've got 8.52 to go in the second period, 2-2. If there is a sixth game in this series, it will be played here at the Spectrum Sunday afternoon. And Hockey in Canada will bring you the action. Game six, if necessary, Sunday here in Philadelphia. We'll be on the air at 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Andre Dupont and Tom Bladen come out now on the defense replacing Van Imp and Jimmy Watson. Terry Chris, Clark, and Bill Flatt are the forwards for the Philadelphia Flyers. Greg Shepard out there comes back to war. Screenshot. And that's grabbed by Bernie Perron, and he holds on to it long enough, and Ron Wicks has another face-off. Bill, this is a far different Boston hockey club than the one we watched lose 4-1 to in that third game of the series here Sunday afternoon. This is a 2-2 tie right now. But here in the second period, it's been almost all Boston from a situation of having good scoring chances. Johnny Busick out there couldn't make his play, and Bladen overstates the puck, but gets it out this time to flat too far. Al Sims of Boston gets to the red line, took a, a jolt from Flett. The puck is shot by Greg Shepard, who just got after it, and the Flyers are kind of letting down a little bit in their own zone, and that could be costly. Greg Shepard did not score that time, but he's been the most accurate shooter throughout the entire playoff year. He had 10 goals on 40 shots going into this game tonight for a 25% scoring average. Gary Dornhopper, who is out for the balance with that separated shoulder was next in line he had five goals and just 21 shots and here is Shepard getting that quick shot away from a sharp angle the angle well covered by Bernie Perron Bill Clement is out there now a shot right on the net again and Joe Watson back in the net lost it Bobby Schmutz trying to center it Shepard digs it out goes to Busick in the other corner 
Johnny Dusick tries to find a man in front, does it himself, right in front. Oh, and Bernie Bryant stopped that. Schmatz, knock the puck, but Clement picks it up. Up to flat, intercepted. Play is called. Penalties here, Schmatz and Watson were having a little bit of a set to of their own back while the play was up at center ice, Dick. You can... With 8-12 remaining in the second period, the score, the Boston Bruins 2, the Philadelphia 17, Flyers 30, 30, 30. 30. And Flyers penalty to number 14, Joe Watson, each two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalties, 11 minutes, 48 seconds. Spots of Boston, Joe Watson the Flyers, each two minutes for roughing. This is Johnny Busick who made a great play to set up Phil Esposito for the Bruins' first goal in the first period. Came very close here a minute ago as he worked his way out from the corner, swung around in front of Perron who had to make a great diving, sprawling save as he went to, the, to his left and there's the stop. Back to the live action as Jim Watson gets it into the Boston zone. They're playing five aside with the two players out for roughing penalties. It's that center, goes back to Ed Van Amp, Ed Van Amp. Over on the left side of Jimmy Watson. Back it comes to Ed Van Impel across the center. And off the cliche stick goes to the corner. And it's picked up by Vadney, who just gets rid of it. Richie LaDuke and McLeish fighting for it along the boards. Lonsbury digs it out to McLeish. Back to Watson. He took a shot. Oh, that just missed the corner. It seemed to change direction. Back for number 14 of the Boston Bruins. Dave Forbes over on the right side for Vadney. Intercepted by Van Imp. And he knocked it back in, and it was offside. The Bruins have outshot the Flyers 6-2 to two so far through this second period, and overall in the game to date, it's 17-11 in favor of Boston. So defensively, the Bruins have certainly come to life and have limited the Flyers to just 11 shots so far. Great controversy here in Philadelphia over the fact that this game is not available on local television. Well, I've covered the Stanley Cup Finals in many American cities, Chicago, New York, Boston principally, and I have never seen a city so wrapped up in hockey as Philadelphia is. It's front page news, store windows have displays about the Flyers, the radio and television coverage, which is rather weak in most American cities as far as the NHL is concerned, newscasts and so on. It's mm -hmm. Flyers all the way, talk shows, it's nothing Everybody's but hockey. Talking about the it's, Philadelphia it Flyers is everywhere you go. Really something. Bobby Clark with Bill Flett. Along with Andre Dupont and Tom Bladen to kill off the remaining seconds. There's a, at least they're playing even with the Boston Bruins as there's a minute and seven seconds to go in the penalties. And it's down the ice for Wayne Cashman over the blue line. Cashman over for Phyllis Pozito. Took a shot and it deflected high. He used his, I don't know where we get a shot of that, Dick, but he changed uh, that shot right-handed when he shoots left. Well, that's Gordy Howe style. Evan Cornway did that a few times this year. I think Evan scored a goal once trying that. I'm sure that Howe must have somewhere along the way. And you'll notice that there are four nuns in attendance tonight, great hockey fans, and you notice where they are sitting? The Very box. close to the penalty <laughs> box. Well, they're getting a good look at most of the players. Phil Esposito gets it back. There's a screenshot by Sims, and it goes to the corner. Out of Philadelphia with Tom Bladen just shooting it out to center ice, and we have seven minutes remaining in this second period, a 2-2 tie. Phil Esposito poking it and it's picked up by Andre Dupont. Dupont goes to the corner, got it around on the boards for Flett. Flett then gets it back to Dupont and Dupont starts out now for the Philadelphia Flyers to center. Knocked it over the line. Bill Flett is offside on the right wing and it'll be brought back out. Had to laugh at a new hockey fan here from out of town the other day chatting after the game and about the introductions for the Flyers and they said it was too bad how they booed that number six when he came out. Don't they like him in Philadelphia? And I said, no, that's just Moose. Obviously not a very keen hockey fan. There's a shot of the penalty box. Joe Watson's in there. And along with Bobby Schmatz, they have 31 seconds remaining. And Joe's father will be Brian's guest during the second intermission. Bill Esposito remains out there with Kenny Hodge, Al Sims, and Bobby Orr. Teams playing five aside. Bill Clement, number 10 out there with Bill Barber, Jimmy Watson, and Ed Van Imp. Jim Watson stops, 
He goes over the line, and he was checked there. Esposito covered Clement. Then Hodge can't get it out. Then Clement took a shot and hit a leg. Kenny Hodge. A pass to Orr. Orr up at center. Over the blue line. Got it back to Phil Esposito. A shot. Oh, and Bernie Perron covered that one as Phil Esposito was standing in front of the net. Was that number four moving, or was he moving? And I'll give Bill Barber credit. He did a great job in hanging tough and sticking with Orr who then beat everybody by dropping the puck back to Esposito. But there is Orr, moving it over the line. An excellent drop pass. But the shot was pretty well dead center, Perron, making the grab. And Esposito, I don't think, got the kind of wood on it he would have liked it. He didn't have that much steam on the shot. Six minutes, 22 seconds remaining in the second period. A 2-2 tie. Clark against Phil Esposito. Clark wins the draw to Ed Van Epp. Around it goes for Bill Barber. Hodge watches him along the boards, and Orr comes up with it at center. Top to back to Hodge. Hodge then hooks it out to Sims. And now the teams are at full strength as the Bruins come over the line. Phil Esposito, a hard drive. That was right on. Bernie Perron stopped that. Around it goes to Bill Barber. Barber then digs it up ahead to center ice to Clark. Over the blue line with Seleski. Clark tried to roll it in front. Gil Bear knocked it off to the side. Orr is grabbed by Clark. And the puck is knocked loose along the boards, and they fall on it in the Boston Territory with five minutes and 48 seconds to go. They have not been able to draw Bobby Orr into anything, Bill, in this series. Not that that was anything serious. It was just typical Bobby Clark determination. There goes Esposito. You know, one of the amazing things about this fellow that nobody really mm -hmm. points out too much but in 10 seasons in the National Hockey League, Phil Esposito has missed only four games, and I think two of those because of a suspension. He's an absolutely remarkably durable player. Goes back to that day. He lost it. Here's a chance for Silk, but in on goal. Oh, and a great save by Gilbert. Another try, a backhand knocked off to the side. As Dave Schultz has that puck again. He's with Kindrachuk. Schultz back of the net, trying to center it. It's picked up by Kindrachuk. Kindrachuk trying to center it. It's off to the boards. Kicked loose again by Kindrachuk. Back of the net. Into the corner, trying to get away from Savard. Trying to center it. And Joe Bear gets a hold of it and Philadelphia does everything. But take the lead. 515 remaining. That's the best burst by the Flyers here in this second period. And Schultz, who has scored a goal. Had the chance. I wonder, Bill, if people will look back when this game is over and talk about this missed opportunity as he broke in with Vatney eliminated from the play and Jill Gilbert, who hasn't been all that busy here in the second period, came up with the key save in a clutch situation. Here's a look at it from the other end of the rink. And there is the chance and the stop. Close call by the Philadelphia Flyers, but the score remains 2-2. R.S. Kindrachuk with Seleski and Schultz. Along with Tom Blake and Andre Dupont at the defense. Foster with Johnny Busick out there with Savard and Schmatz. Back it comes to Bladen. Bladen shot it into the corner. Schultz trying to get it up front again with Seleski standing in front and it's knocked down the ice by Boston. Going back for it, Andre Dupont, number six of the Flyers. Up it comes to Dave Schultz to Kindrachuk. Kindrachuk still has it. Over for Zaleski, over the blue line. Into Zaleski again, intercepted, and shot out over the blue line. Now then, Bladen. A pass for Zaleski. Over the line. Zaleski skated off by Schmutz, and Orr comes up with it. Bobby Orr turns. Dropping it back to Johnny Busick. Busick's pass off Schmutz skate. And Dave Schultz made a beautiful move on Johnny Busick. Schultz. Over the line. Still has it. Gives it to Tom Blade. There's the shot. Oh, and Gilbert stopped that hard drive. But again, Dave Schultz. Coming up with some great stick handling. This game is coming to you from the Philadelphia Spectrum.
Tom Bladen had the scoring chance for the Flyers after Dave Schultz had, had done his thing. Legally this time, Schultz in a rather fancy skating and stick handling exhibition, which drew a standing ovation when he left the ice. The Bruins back off. You see Sims get out of the way, and that one almost sneaked through, Bill. Joe yeah, Bear had pretty trouble. Close. Here's a chance for McLeish, and he shot it into the corner as he tried a backhand. Dallas Smith, back of the net. Starts out on the right wing. He's being watched by McLeish, but he gets it out to center ice. Stopped there by Ed Van Epp, who rolled it back in again. And the Philadelphia Flyers are starting to skate again, as they did in that game, which they won here in game number three. Now it's Dallas Smith in the corner, left it there. Comes back to Ed Van Epp, and he took a shot, and McLeish tried to deflect it. Lonsbury couldn't get to it. Ken Hodge tries to get it out. He hit McLeish. Now then, Badney's checked. And Dallas Smith will try his luck. Up for Phil Esposito. It goes in over the red line, and back for it is Ross Lonsbury. Lonsbury of Philadelphia. Starting out, having it Hubble controlling the puck, but now he works his way out to center. Backhands the puck in. Ole goes after it. Gil Bayer knocked it behind the net. He's out of his goal, but then he gets back in again. It goes to Phil Esposito. Phil Esposito starts out for Boston at his own blue line up at center gaining speed over the line to Hodge Hodge couldn't get his shot away Badney moves up shot it that if was covered by Phil Esposito the puck goes to Cashman Cashman trying to center it he did and it's knocked back to Badney Badney had it half over his stick Lonsbury knocked him down and McLeish goes out Rick McLeish at center over the line with Flett. Flett takes the pass. He shoots it. Oh, and a great save there by Joe Bear as Billy Flett was going for the top right-hand corner, Dick. 2.47 left in the second period. Still a 2-2 tie. During our upcoming second intermission, Dave Hodge is going to be chatting with Bill White of the Chicago Blackhawks. You're going to meet the girl from Hockey Night in Canada. And Brian will be in conversation with the father of the Watson brothers. Of the Flyers, Mr. Watson has made the trip from Smithers, B.C. And Dave will be along with Donnie Marshall, and they will be analyzing the second period. We have not had a goal in the second period so far. Only three minor penalties, and the score remains tied 2-2. Black Barber and Flett, along with Joe Watson and Andre Dupont. Greg Shepard with Johnny Busick and Bobby Schmutz. Joe Watson's shot was wide, and Dupont moved up, took a whack at it, it's knocked down with a glove, rolls near the Boston goal, Clark is covered, Barber back to Clark again, Clark back in the net, gets away from Sims, trying to get it out, but he did, oh, and he just rolled it past the open corner. Barber back for Clark again, they're trying to center it, Clark gives it to Barber, back of the goal, Barber into the corner, knocked down, it's centered right in front of the net. Here's a chance for Fleck, and his shot hit Orr. Orr gets it up on the right wing to Schmatz. And to Greg Shepard. Greg Shepard over the line with a shot that hit Joe Watson. He tried to center it. It goes into the corner. Third back of the goal. And we have a minute at 56 seconds remaining in the second period. A 2-2 tie. Clark shoots it out to center right. Picked off there by Barber. Barber with Flett. Cleared in. The Flyers are changing on the goal. Now the now Sims. Shoots it off the boards. It gets by Clement, and Schmutz has it. Back to Shepard. Shepard hit Clement. And it's Orr feeding it to Greg Shepard. Shepard up at center with a long shot. Bernie Perron handled that very easily. It goes over on the left side. Clement giving it to Terry Chris. Chris gets it back out at center ice. Two Bruins fell together. Over the line for Zaleski and Chris. There's a hard shot, and that goes off the glove. Uh, Jill Bear up into the crowd. One minute and 13 seconds remain in the second period of 2 2 time. From the time Schultz had that break off the faceoff in the Boston zone, it's been pretty well all Philadelphia, save for that one stretcher. Esposito and Cashman came close, but the Flyers have carried the play to the Bruins for the last oh, five or six minutes here after Boston has pretty well controlled things through most of the second period. Clark and Lonsbury are coming back out again along with McLeish. Well, the players are certainly juggling their lines around to try and get some firepower going. They feel that they are putting the pressure on the Bruins. Dick, at the moment, as you mentioned, they seem to have turned this around in the last five.
five minutes. Shiro's doing the same thing in this game. Billy did toward the end of that Ranger series. Starting as the game goes on, it changes lines much faster. Well, there's one for the politically minded in this time of the campaign in our country. <laughs> Kill Esposito, Kenny Hodge, and Wayne Cashman out there for the Bruins. Now Smith and Badney. One thirteen remaining. Cut got the drive. Dupont back. It comes to Bladen. There's a shot. Oh, it's right on. And Joe Bear stopped that. Young Bladen can fire that puck. He let the shot go, which led to the first Philadelphia goal. Redirected into the net by McLeish early in the first period. Had a close call a couple of minutes ago, and Gilbert had trouble with a shot that was aimed between his legs. And now here's another one. Look at that fancy Dan pass from Moose Dupont, and the shot gets by Smith, who came out to cover up. Good stop by Gilbert. Another look at it. Really good, good shooting by Bladen. He got it past Smith in front, trying for the deflection type play. Was Lonsbury. They missed Gary Dornhopper in front of the other team's net. Uh, Bill, talking about the Flyers. Dornhopper, the unfortunate victim of that injury situation on Sunday when he suffered a dislocated shoulder. All right, Dick. We're back to live action now with a minute and seven seconds remaining to play in the second period. A 2 2 tie. Clark won the faceoff, then was checked, and Batney shoots it off the boards past Cashman to center ice. Andre Dupont, with one the minute to go in, in the period, knocks the puck right back in again, and the Flyers are pouring onto the attack now to try and keep them in. There's Terry Chris blocking it in. Dallas Smith back to the Boston goal. He's being watched by Ross Lonsbury. Now in Phil Esposito. Gets away from Terry Chris, and he comes to center ice. Comes up to the Philadelphia line still has it got the shot away and it was just off the side Cashman running into his check and then Phil Esposito bumped into Tom Bladen and I think Phil Esposito may have been getting a penalty on this. I think they're both going off Bill and Esposito is upset meanwhile while all this is going on Andre Dupont has just now been taken away from being entangled his skates tied up in the mesh bag of Bernie Perra. But Bladen took Esposito out along the boards. And are we going to see that? No, we're going to see DuPont Boston fall in back of the seven, net. seven, Phil Esposito. Two minutes for roughing. Flyers penalty to number three, Tom Bladen. Two minutes for elbowing. Time of the penalties, 19 minutes, 26 seconds. 19.26 the time of the penalty. So there is young Tom Bladen in the penalty box along with Phil Esposito. The penalties will carry over to the start of the third period. And there's Phil, hand on hip. And the fans seem to be giving it to him, I think, a little bit. That hand on hip, this, uh, this pose of Phil's became so famous in the Team Canada Soviet series. Bobby Orr goes back out now on the defense along with Madney and Schmidt. Greg Shepard along with Cashman. Clark is out there with McLeish. Jimmy Watson and Ed Van Imp. And we have 31 seconds with the clock running in this second period. Ed Van Imp nearly gave it away, but Jimmy Watson recovers, rolls it down the ice. It will not have enough momentum to go over the red line. Badney giving it to Orr. Orr with 17 seconds over to Badney. Badney straight down the ice, three of them. Badney lets the shot go, and that's deflected by Van Ip wide. It rolls in front. Bernie Ferrand covers up with his glove and holds on with eight seconds left. This Philadelphia defenseman play that situation so well where the players wind up for the big slap shot, but so often they don't get it away. In this case, Van Imp defending on Badney, timing it perfectly as he pokes the puck, pokes his stick out ahead of him and knocks the puck away. And then the deflection from the sharp angle, which is handled by Perron. Bill Clement, Bill Clement, number 10. Uh, Bill, we worked a game, the Sunday afternoon game in New York between the Flyers and the Rangers. He played a good game, the first game he played in the playoffs, and he was injured in practice the next day. It's his first appearance since. And there he goes out to center ice, number 10, Bill Clement, with a long shot. Joe Bear knocked it off to the corner, and there goes the buzzer to end the second period. Shots on goal over the two periods. 19 for the Boston Bruins, 18 for the Philadelphia Flyers. Two period totals from the Philadelphia Spectrum, the Stanley Cup playoffs.
fine summery afternoon and so I think Bill what is the most beautiful stadium I've ever seen veteran stadium here in Philadelphia just a tremendous piece of property a matter of fact it's a tremendous complex yeah, uh, all around Dick uh, you were mentioning we were, we we're awing at that football stadium they right. got maybe you can explain to people from coast to coast just what how the size of this complex is you've got a baseball stadium that seats how many 50,000 or thereabouts uh, your the football ring here. stadium takes that's the old uh, JFK Stadium, which holds 102,000 people, and they use it once a year for the Army <laughs> yeah, Navy, Army Navy game. Well, I think uh, you were mentioning just at the end of that period, just be before the period ended, that the Flyers were starting to skate. Now we'll have to watch and see if this skating is going to pay off for them in this third period, because uh, the Bruins started to sag a little bit in the latter stages of the second period as the Philadelphia Flyers started that quick. Uh, changing of players and also skating hard. So let's, we're underway now in the third period as Jimmy Watson shoots it in. There's a race for it. See who gets to it first. Al Sims did. And therefore, it's icing called against the Philadelphia Flyers. We want to apologize for the fact that Mr. Watson, father of Joe and Jim, did not get to appear with Brian on our intermission. And we hope to talk to Mr. Watson during an intermission leading into overtime if we do have overtime tonight. But some of the congestion in the corridors here at the Spectrum held Mr. Watson up from getting to his appointed spot. So hopefully we can chat with this very colorful gentleman who's come a long way to see his sons fight for the Stanley Cup all the way from Smithers, B.C. I'd also like to mention, Dick, that uh, with a, a minute and 16 seconds remain in the penalties to Phil Esposito and Tom Bladen, the teams are playing five aside. Buck ends up in the corner, picked up by Jimmy Watson. Knocked it down the ice again. Intended for Barber. He couldn't get to it. Sims will get back there again and we'll have another icing. So uh, I would say the Flyers are not taking any chances trying to come out of their own zone. There's Al Sims who is seeing a lot of service tonight in place of Daryl Edistrad. He's only been on once. And Sims was drafted number 47 last summer out of the Cornwall Royals. One of those fellows that you don't even bother looking at when the draft names are announced, I guess, when you get down to that level. And what a find he has been for Boston. He moved in, stepped in alongside number four, which isn't a bad way to That's start right his NHL learn, career. 21 years of age, has played very well, and is getting a real full shot at it here tonight in game four. Okay, Dick, and uh, as you mentioned before, the, sometimes the uh, amateur players turn out to be better professionals than they were as amateurs. Terry Chris, number 15 out there. He's going to face off against number 18 of the Boston Bruins, Richie LeDuc. Andre Dupont didn't like the way that was being set up, so he stepped into the circle, and they're really delaying things here now. But, of course, every move that they make from here on in is crucial because it's a 2-2 tie, and we're in the first minute of the third period. And unless somebody breaks this tie, they'll play overtime. A hopped over or stick. A race for it. Down the ice for Zaleski. Or got back, but Terry Chris moves in for the left side. Chris waited too long, but gave it to Zaleski. Tried to get it out in front again. And Orr covered up. He nearly gave it away, but he got it back again. Up for the Duke. The Duke coming to center with a long shot. Way wide. A rebound right in front of the net. Bernie Perrant just stepped out of the way of that one. Up the ice for Terry Chris. At center to Andre Dupont. Dupont over the line with a shot. Way wide of the net. And the rebound taken by the Bruins. Richie LeDuc. LeDuc being watched by Chris. Gets it ahead to Orr. Back to LeDuc. LeDuc at his own blue line. Up to center. Pass Chris. And he shot it in. And now then the Bruins are changing on the goal. Badney comes out. Dallas Smith and Shepard. Bill Flett to Bobby Clark. Long shot off the board. Joe Bear into the boards, but Clark was there. Dallas Smith checked him. Dallas Smith, a long pass over here for Bobby Schmatz. Schmatz number 17. Chase back to the blue line. 18-28 remaining as the teams are back at full strength. Shot by Schmatz is off the target. Goes over to Vadney. Phil Esposito on the ice, now skates off to the bench, and Johnny Busick comes out. Flat to Clark. Gets it ahead. Over the line for Tommy Bladen, but it's outside as Flett went in on the right side. 18.08 to go in the third period. This game is coming to you from the Philadelphia Spectrum.
figure that face off the Because this is the that's the second area, that's the total. Well, that's the way they feel about Bobby Orr here in the spectrum. Through the first two periods, incidentally, Orr played a total of 23 minutes and 15 seconds. McLeish, Lonsbury, and Nole are the forwards for Philadelphia. Shepard, Busick, and Schmatz. There's a shot. That goes up into the crowd after it was wide and high. Best man on the faceoff tonight has been Greg Shepard of the Bruins, who won 15 out of 22 through the first two periods. Bobby Clark won 15 of 27. Phil Esposito, 9 of 20. Clark leads Esposito 8 to 6 in the matchups between those two players. Overall, Boston winning 33 draws, Philadelphia 28. Back to action here now as Dallas Smith brings it up to center. He fanned on it. Greg Shepard followed up to over the line and then took him out of the play. And no way. Taps it over to McLeish. McLeish back at the blue line, up to center right. A pass for Nole was blocked by the Bruins defense. Dallas Smith lost it to McLeish. He rolls it in, and Carol Vadney shoots it right out of Greg Shepard. Shepard turns, gets it back to Vadney, and Vadney straight down the ice at center, over the red line, a long shot wide. And the rebound off to Ed Van Imp. Ed Van Imp for Nole, stopped by Dallas Smith, then Van Imp again for McLeish. It goes out to center right. No way. Tried to steal a puck from Badney. If he had, he was on the, in the clear. Ed Van Imp for No Lay. No Lay is checked by Busick. Busick over the line. Busick tried to slip to the fence. Still has it. Tried to center it. Gets it back. Here's the shot by Schmatz. Greg Shepard. Back to Badney. Badney shot it in for Schmatz. Here it is to Busick. Back to Schmatz. Right in front. Oh, knocked out and down the ice. By the Philadelphia Flyers, as the Bruins came off the close. Long pass for Busick at center. Went to Joe Watson of Philadelphia. Joe Watson, a beautiful pick, and Esposito gets it over to Bill Flat. There's his drive, and Gilbert holds on to it for a faceoff with 16 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the third period. Good chance for the Bruins, as Bill pointed out. Close range try. And Perron making the big stop. The puck came through the goal crease and out the other side. Tom Blade and Andre Dupont with Schultz, Clark, and Fleck. Dave Schultz playing a very strong game on that left wing for the Philadelphia Flyers. There's Fleck's shot. The Bears got that, dropped it. Scooped into the corner. Ken Hodge. Stopped by DuPont. There's four flyers, and the shot goes to the corner. Sims had it knocked off, flat stick, and it goes into the crowd, and they'll have a face off in that circle. Boston Territory. But Kenny Arthur already gave it away that time, Dick. Well, a couple of bad passes here, Bill. Uh, just prior to, it was Carol Vadney who made a bad pass, which led to the previous face off, and then Hodge that time, and here they are again. Esposito won the faceoff. Cashman out to Kenny Hodge. One man back. DuPont. Kenny Hodge over the line. Fakes the shot. Let's it go. And it's tapped by Bernie Perron. DuPont. And Bladen stopped by Hodge, who centered it. Cashman couldn't get to it. Comes to the blue line. Stopped by Sims. A shot. Bernie Perron deflected that one along the boards. Cashman kept it in. It's back in the net. DuPont. DuPont jammed by Hodge. And that's where play ends. Pittsburgh Penguins received some rather disturbing news in the last few days with word that Wayne Bianchin, their fine young player, was rookie this past season, suffered a broken neck in a surfing accident in Hawaii. Pittsburgh general manager Jack Button back to us about it tonight. Reports that doctors in Hawaii say that things are favorable. Wayne is up and around, walking. No paralysis has developed. He'll be flown to Pittsburgh as soon as possible for further medical treatment. Wayne Bianchin, the player in question from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Huck was not dropped fairly. We'll do it again. Fifteen minutes, 53 seconds remaining in this the third period, and there's the Flyers bench. No lays talking to Clement. 
puck in the Flyers territory, but they get it out. Don Zaleski, number 11, still has it. A nice play to Kendrick. They're going in together. Oh, and he just missed it. To otherwise, Zaleski was in the clear. Back for Cashman over the line. Hodge can't do anything about it. Ellie Barber sends Kendrick down to center. Over the blue line. Kendrick going in alone. Right in on goal. He rolled it right front. Oh, and he just failed to put it in. Barber out front, Zaleski a shot. He shot it high. Played by Hodge to Cashman. Out for Phil Esposito too far, and Ed Van Ip knocked it out again. Kendra Chuck came within an ace of breaking this 2-2 deadlock in this third period. Now the Bruins. Sims, a pass up for O'Reilly, and it's knocked out to Kendra Chuck. Kendra Chuck with four players breaking over the line. Back to Barber. Barber shoots it right on, and a good save by Joe Bear. Well, I mentioned how Al Sims came sort of out of nowhere to use a phrase to, you know, be a very strong part of a Boston Bruin hockey team. But if you were to say who's the find of the year in the National Hockey League and you voted for Oris Kindrachuk, I don't think you'd get much of an argument. He beat he Bobby. Was up as a free agent, right. Wasn't he? he beat Bobby Orr on that play. He swung around Orr, got through the goal crease. Close call. Well, we have 14.57 to go in this third period, a 2-2 tie. Crisp got the draw. DuPont wasn't in position. And it slides back to center ice. It goes over on the far wing. Joe Watson to Crisp again. Chris fell. Badney comes back with Marcotte. Savard trailing. Marcotte tried to get it to him. And it goes to the boards. And Crisp is back there for it. Terry Crisp. Up for Rick McLeish. McLeish and Joe Watson going down together. McLeish over the line. And he was stopped by Dallas Smith. The Bruins break. Dallas Smith over on the left side for Marcotte. Marcotte. In back of the net, still has it. Trying to set up O'Reilly, and Chris comes back. Over for Lonsbury, over the line, back for Chris. And that puck was bouncing. Andre Savard to Badney. Badney and O'Reilly up together. Badney shoots one off a skate into the corner. Ross Lonsbury has the puck, gives it to Joe Watson, and Watson goes back of the net. Over to Andre Dupont. Dupont. Carrying it to the blue line, but not out. O'Reilly kept it in. Savard, he's jammed by Crisp. Tried to get it back to the blue line, he did. Carol Vadney, a drive, and Bernie Blanc stopped out. Enemy penalties, I think Marcotte and Joe Watson were mixing it up. With 13.44 remaining in the third period, the score, the Philadelphia Flyers two, the Boston Bruins two. of the Flyers back in the penalty box. Watson there along with Mark Gutt. They have been sent off each with two minutes for roughing at 6-16 here in the third period. We've got to go all the way back to the first period to check the goal scores. McLeish and Schultz for Philadelphia giving them a 2-0 lead. Esposito and Savard tying the score before the first period was over. And it's still tied up at 2-2. Kendra Chuck goes back out there to center with Barber and they have Jimmy Watson and Ed Van Amp. It goes back to Sims. Sims shoots it around on the boards. It's back of the net. Brunt stopping it there for Ed Van Amp. Ed Van Amp then into the corner to Jimmy Watson. Jimmy Watson takes his time at the blue line to Ed Van Amp. Ed Van Amp off the boards. And it's Barber bringing it in with Kindrachuk. Barber is given a bump. Jimmy Watson moves up, takes his shot, and that was stopped by Joe Bear. Barber knocked the puck into the corner. It's cleared ahead for number 14, Dave Forbes. Forbes gets it over on the left wing to Orr. Orr, failing it over the line. He was hit by Ed Van Epp. And it goes back into the Boston Territory. And Bobby Orr was given a real good jolt by Van Epp. Orr coming back at center. That seems to have worked him up a little bit. He gets it in. There's a backhand way wide of the net. Orbs from the other wing, a backhand in behind that Philadelphia net. And it goes to the other wing. Comes back to Orr. His shot is wide. 
Sims from the left wing lets one go. That hits Kinderchuk. His oh. pass intercepted. Here's the Sims going in right in front. Oh, he took a shot and Watson dropped in front of it. They've still got it though. Here's Sims. Takes a shot and it then it dropped in front of it. Now we talk a lot Jimmy about Watson Bernie. searching. Talk a lot about Bernie Farron with the big saves that he comes up with, but give credit to his defense. And there you see, just as the camera pads down, Watson still down in his hands and knees in back of the Philadelphia net. Here is Van Imp against Orr. A rather spectacular collision. And Orr goes up, over, and down. Much to the delight of the 17-007, or at least the vast majority of them. A few Bruin fans scattered here and about. Harry Sindham and Tom Johnson sitting not too far away from where we are. There is the scene now with Jim Watson, a 21-year-old younger member of the Watson fandom of brothers. And he gets up now and slowly takes it off, skates toward the Philadelphia bench. 35 seconds remain in the penalties to his older brother Joe and to Don Marcotte of the Bruins. And we look up at the clock also and we see we have 12 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in regulation time. A 2-2 tie. Bill, Jim Watson's a durable campaigner. This is the 93rd game for the Flyers, not counting exhibitions. And Rick McLeish and Jim Watson are the only Philadelphia players to appear in all 93. Bobby Clark has missed one. All set to go. The team's playing five aside. Off the boards it comes, and it goes to Ross Lonsbury. Lonsbury with McLeish over the line. Lonsbury tried to get a shot, then he was hit hard, got a, away from a piece of it. Then Bladen was bumped by Schmatz, and it goes out to Busick. Back to Schmatz, but over the line, as checked there by McLeish. McLeish coming back up to center right, coming over the line. Rick McLeish takes a shot high, and Greg Shepard's out there now with Busick, Badney, and Dallas Smith, and we have four seconds left in those penalties. Following along the lines of the long, long season, this is game number 92 for the Bruins. Phil Esposito, Wayne Cashman, and Don Marcotte have appeared in all 92. Carol Badney and Dallas Smith each have missed just one. There you see Marcotte getting set to come back onto the ice over on the far side. He's up on his feet. Joe Watson still sitting down. As Bill mentioned, four seconds left in their penalty. Oh, now Marcotte decides that he'll get the last gasp out of breather. Here's number 19, Greg Shepard of the Boston Bruins. And he's setting up with Bobby Clark. Clark has the puck there for a second. Then Shepard got him off it. And Badney comes up with the puck now for now the penalties are over. There's a pass right for the net. Badney gave it to Flat. Flat's getting another chance. That one came out in front. And the Flyers did everything there as Schultz is knocked down. Up the ice for Busick. Gets it over the blue line. Then it was checked and knocked out. Bruins changing on the goal. Offside, Johnny Busick. Boy, the Bruins are going to get caught sooner or later if they don't get away from that business. We pointed out bad passes earlier this period by Vadney and Hodge. Now here's Vadney again on this last one with Flett cruising in. Look at this. Off a leg, right to Flett, and a great chance. But Gilbert very alertly at that bill came out before the flyer player could really get set on the play, and that was the big chance for Philadelphia that time. Shepard, Schmatz, and Busick. There's Clark coming down with Flett over the line. A long shot is way wide of the net. Schultz shot it around on the boards to the other side. Flett goes after it there. He wrapped it near the net. Now it's Dave Schultz in the corner to Clark. Clark. Takes a look. He shot it in front. Moving up is Tom Bladen. There's his shot. He hit a skate. Bladen wrapped it into the corner. The fire's all over the Bruins at this point. Comes back to the blue line. Andre Dupont kept it in. Clark in the corner. Now back of the net. Fed it out front. And Billy Fletch shot it. And it went over the glass. The Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Philadelphia Spectrum. Right now, as they're trying to warm these 
fires up with a score tied 2-2 and 10.47 remaining in regulation time. The puck is back to the Boston net. And they have possession. Sends to Phyllis Pizzito up to Wayne Cashman at center. Cashman takes the shot that hit Ed Van Epp and he flicks it into the crowd. Ed Van Epp out there in the defense with Joe Watson and Dick, I notice now that the players are starting to feel the heat of this uh, uh, spectrum because of the warm, warm weather outside, although they do have excellent air conditioning. Did you uh, get a temperature today, Bill? It was oh, 72 or 73. Very warm, very windy and warm. <laughs> Come, they face off or knock the puck to the corner, and Ed Van Epp is there. He rolled it out. It was high, it went down the ice. Barber and Sims bump together. Orr gives the puck to Phil Esposito. Esposito a pass for Orr, he let it go. Orr at his own blue line, comes to center. Over to Hodge, over the line. Hodge let a last go wide. Barber the rebound, and Phil Esposito shot. Oh, it's right in front of the net. Bernie Pratt made the save on that. Now then, it's Bill Barber up at center. He's going with McLeish. They're over the line. Barber worked his way through the defense, tried to set up McLeish. Hodge gets it over to Phil Esposito at the blue line. Esposito to Cashman. Over the line. Stopped by Bladen and knocked out to center ice. Goes off the boards to Bill Flett. Flett shot it in for Lonsbury. Lonsbury covered by Orr. And they get a face off. Hodge and Lonsbury. Bumping one another. Well, the fans upset about that. With less than 10 minutes to go in regulation time, you can't say that these teams are falling back into a cautious pattern, Bill, sort of waiting for a break. Had some good scoring chances at uh, both ends. Phil Esposito just had a dandy. And Para made a big save. Now, here is what has got the fans upset as that jam up occurred. And with Lonsbury and Orr originally, the whistle went and there's Hodge coming in after the fact. Clark with Dave Schultz and Bill Flett. Schultz has Schmatz covered. Badney goes back in the net into the corner. Gets it up to center ice. And hops over to Busick. Busick trying to get it to Schmatz. He is in the clear. And in a goal. Oh, and Bernie Clark got the puck off the stick. It's the third big scoring chance for Bobby Schmatz tonight. He can't buy a goal. Great play by Schmatz to get the pass on his stick. He had to reach for it, but he made a good play at the line right here. And then he moved in, but lost control of the puck as he moved in, put the leg out to try to avoid the check from Schultz. And the puck sort of just rolled in the Perron, who came out and smothered the puck, which was bouncing along the ice. Bobby Schmatz getting That's some scoring chances. chances. He's had oh. tonight that could have been goals, but they aren't. And Bernie Perron came up with a big save and the rolls to the blue line. Dallas Smith. Lost it. Fred Shepard let the shot go. That was knocked down by Busick's glove, and it went dangerously close to that Philadelphia net. And Busick tried to center it again. Clark is covered by Shepard, and the puck goes out to the blue line. Adney covering at center, but then he gave it away to Clark. Clark comes down over the blue line. Clark dropped it for Schultz. Into Clark in the corner. Bobby Clark missed it. Then Schultz gets in there. And it's called by referee Ron Wicks. Well, you get the feeling that if this had been in the first period, a situation like that involving Schultz would have ended up in a fight. Because that's the way he was acting for the most part during that opening 20 minutes. He had a couple of battles. And what, a couple of majors, I guess. A major and a minor. A minor which upset the Bruins terribly toward the end of the period. Eight but minutes and 51 seconds remaining in regulation time. A 2-2 tie. Dick, as you're mentioning, they are getting a little on the cautious side, but they've had their chances. And there's Ron Wicks, who really laid the law down in the first period, and it's paid off. He comes back near the Bruins, three of them, three on two. Up there comes the center. O'Reilly took the pass, dropped it back to Savard. He takes the shot. Oh, another shot. And they missed the corner. Right out to the blue line. No way, knocked it down the ice. Race for it. He is hit by Sims, knocked him down. Goes back to center, O'Reilly. Over the blue line. O'Reilly took a shot. Gets it again. Try to center it. It's back of the goal. Cleared around on the boards again. And the Flyers now with Crisp. 
Coming up to center with the way. Knocked Kimmel off this. Skates, here's Orr coming back. Orr dropped it. O'Reilly got it in front of the net. And it been him. Just shot it out and down the ice. Gilbert had to snap it with eight minutes remaining in regulation time. 2-2 two -two tie. A pass up on the left wing. Stopped by DuPont. DuPont off the board. Both teams looking for a break. A pass for McLeish. Stopped by O'Reilly. O'Reilly at center. Over the blue line. He was checked. And here come the players. Lonsbury, a hard shot. That's why. Bill Barber is hit along the boards by Marcotte. Then it goes back to the net, and O'Reilly comes up with it. Riley shooting it down the ace. And it goes over the red line, and it'll be brought back for racing with seven minutes and 21 seconds remaining. Whitland back to the Boston bench, and boy, the fever is mounting, and the tension is mounting here in the spectrum. It's getting almost electrified. Here's back to the blue line. Oh, and Joe Watson fanned on it, and it's brought back down the eight. Dallas Smith up over the blue line. Dallas Smith shoots. Ernie Perron clubs that. Andre Dupont, a long pass down the ice. Going after it. Bill Fleck, he tried to center it. He went up and made the play. The Flyers have it. Center right in front of Bill Fleck. Here's the shot. Oh, and that just went past the open corner. Bobby Clark is knocked out. Now then, Clark and Badney were fencing on one another. Comes up the center. Goes back to Badney. Badney just gets rid of it to center right. Goes all the way back to Joe Watson. Six minutes and 32 seconds. Dave Schultz broken up by Cashman. Cashman checked by Flett. He's checked. Hodge gets it over the line. Going to have Joe Watson pick it up for Philadelphia. Over to Flett. Flett knocked it into the Bruins territory, and Badney shoots it out to Cashman. Up to Phil Esposito. He's checked by Ed Van Imp. And Dallas Smith comes over the line. The Schmatz. And that's broken up. Back comes McLeish. At center, over the blue line. Stops. Trying to get it in front, and it's knocked back out on the right wing. Cleared into the Bruins zone. Now Badney with 5.53 remaining. A long shot. And Bernie Perrant got a piece of that. Now, Jimmy Watson gets it over on the right wing. The center right. Barber, then over for Lonsbury. And it's big for the Barber. Barber shoots. Oh! Streamers coming down from the gallery. Programs being thrown. Everybody on their feet. As the goal by Bill Barber has given the Flyers a 3-2 lead with 5.35 remaining in regulation time. Can't say much about this except it's just a terrific shot to the top corner over Gilbert's glove side. Bobby Orr fell in front of the shot. And it picked the top corner from well out, but it was, I think, partially screened by Orr. There's a good look at it from directly behind Barber. There's the spot, the only place he could have put it, and there it is, up under the crossbar. And the Flyers have taken a 3-2 lead. And there it is, the picture tells the story right here with the reaction to the go-ahead goal here at the Spectrum. They 
are still on their feet. They are still cheering. Lonsbury will get one assist. I don't know if anybody else is going to get an official assist. Lonsbury and Jim Watson. Barber scoring at 14-25. The Bruins have had their chances. It's been a wide open stretch here in this third period with the score tied. But now Barber has broken the tie. So the Bruins have got to come back. They came back from a 2-0 deficit to tie the game 2-2 in the first period. Okay, Dick, 535, remaining in regulation time. Goes back to Sims over to Orr. Bobby Orr chased back by Kendrachuk. Cleared up for Shepard, broken up, and the fire shoot it into the Boston territory. Kendrachuk goes after that puck, Orr after it. Orr is being held there. The puck goes loose. Bruins trying to get it out. Johnny Busick. A pass over to Orr, up with Busick. At center, at the Busick, over the line. It's center right in front. Oh, and Orr couldn't get a shot. Orr is lying on the ice, but he's all right. He gets up. Well, the old pro, Johnny Busick, led the charge this time along with Orr. And Busick got the puck back out to Orr, who did not have good balance. As he was bothered by Dupont in front of Perron. So Bobby Orr, who I think, Bill, we're going to see quite a bit of through this last five minutes and one second of regulation time. He may be getting a break here now, but he's going to be out there a lot, I'm sure. Now he's staying on. Here's the play again. Watch Orr take up a position in front of the net. Dupont checking. But the puck comes out, and Dupont flattens Orr before he can get a good crack at the puck. Time with that final, that goal by the Philadelphia Flyers was 14-25. Barber from Lonsbury and Jimmy Watson. Five minutes now remaining. Up the ice for Philadelphia. No Watson just shoots it in. And the Flyers go into forecheck. Here's a chance for McLeish to shot. Right on! Two Flyers standing right there. Barber back to the net. Gets it into the corner. Back to Barber. Barber trying to center it. Has it in the corner. Still has it. Right in front. There's a try. Daniel Bear made a great save on Ross Lonsbury. Four minutes and 34 seconds left in regulation time. I don't think we're going to have penalties to. as the result of this, Bill. <laughs> Stage of the game, you want to stay on the ice. I think so. The Bruins upset with Lonsbury. Quite a confrontation, Lonsbury and Jill Gilbert. Lonsbury did his best to draw the puck around the Boston goaltender right here. Gave him the big fake, then tried to swing around to his forehand. But Gilbert covered up on the play. Didn't give him any room. There's Badney that started a bit of a hassle. We do not have penalties. Listen to these pads. This place has just been peddling since Barber's goal. Game five, Thursday night in Boston. Game six, if necessary, Sunday afternoon back here in Philadelphia. Esposito getting it to Dallas Smith over for Cashman. Checked by Bill Flett. Terry Chris moves up. Dallas Smith gets it loose to Badney. Badney gives it to Phil Esposito. Back to Badney. Moving up at center, a pass over for Dallas Smith, and it's way offside at the Philadelphia Blue Line. Four minutes, 18 seconds left in regulation time. Well, the task ahead for the Bruins is obvious. They're going to have to open up. But right now, Bill, the Flyers are checking uh, better than at any time during this third period in That's particular. Right. Yep, they're I'm giving starting them to step the tempo up a little bit. Not giving the Bruins any room to move around. And that, of course, is going to be their game plan. Dallas Smith will be back farming in Manitoba shortly. But he hopes farming with another Stanley Cup win behind him. And it's going to be tough. Goes back to Dallas Smith over to Carl Vatney, and he just shoots it in. Ernie Perrant left it there for Jimmy Watson. He shoots it around. 
but can't get it out. Here's a chance for Cashman. Cashman of Boston tried to center it. He's knocked down. The puck goes loose to flat. Bill Flat moving up to center. Stopped by Dallas Smith. Then Terry Chris hits it in. Three minutes, 52 seconds left. Regulation time, 20. Dallas Smith in the corner. Chris tried a forecheck, and here comes Smith. Over it goes to Vadney. 342 left. A long shot went off Bill Flint's back. Ends up behind the net. Into the corner. Picked up by the Bruins. And then the Flyers break it up. Terry Chris with 331 left. A pass for Clark. Clark closing in. Clark goes around two. Back to Dupont. Dupont going right in that goal. She scores! Tough on the eardrums here at the spectrum. Andre Dupont, who scored that all-important goal to tie the game in the last minute in game two in Boston, scores one right here to give the Flyers a two-goal lead with 3.20 left. Great play by Bobby Clark, set it up. Lots of room for Dupont. He swung around Phil Esposito and then let it go. Stick side and in. Gilbert no away out of the net, perhaps too far out. Clark had drawn everybody over to that side. And there's Dupont. Made no mistake with the chance when he got the shot away. There he goes. Past Esposito, who's trying to stick check him. And a good shot off the stick handle. No clap shot for him that time. He just let it go. And it's 4 2 Flyers. as you can see on the scoreboard and play is underway again it's the Flyers four the Bruins two with 312 left back of the net for Joe Watson over to Andre Dupont Dupont flipped it out over the blue line the center is knocked back in again Joe Watson after it in the corner off the boards for Zaleski snapped by Orr Orr lets a shot go that hit Watson close to Markov Mike Cott shot it in, back of the net, stopped there by Kinderchuk. Doris Kinderchuk just gets it out and down the ice. Orr has to go back for it. 2.40 left. Orr coming down the ice. They trail by two. Orr to center. Over the blue line. Makes the shot. Goes in, back of the net. Fell. The puck is loose. Back of the goal. They're trying to center it. Goes back to Kinderchuk. Up it comes to Zaleski. Down the ice he goes. Simon O'Leary went after it. He's knocked down by Sims. It goes back to center. Two minutes and ten seconds left. Four to two, Philadelphia. Watson, Jimmy Watson, over to hit that in. Bruins changing on the goal. Hit that in. Back it goes. Slow the game down. 155. Up it comes to center ace. The Bruins shoot it right back in again. Goes low, they get it. Jimmy Watson over to Ben in. Shot it to the blue line, it's out. And the Bruins finally get possession with a minute and 30 sec eight seconds left. They shoot it in, and it didn't get over the line. It's back for McLeish with Barber. He shoots, oh, and he shot wide. Back for the Bruins, Barkon over the blue line. Into the corner. He said it right in front of Bernie Pryor. Made the save. Well, make it standing ovation number 11 or 12, or is it 15? 
Within the last few minutes here at the Spectrum, I don't think anybody has bothered to sit down since Barber scored. Bernie Perron that time making a good stop as the Bruins tried to battle back. That's only the second good chance they've had since Barber's go-ahead goal, which came with 5.35 left in regulation time. We now have 1.20 remaining, and the Flyers lead by two. No move by Beth Gwitlin to pull the goaltender. He's down by two, of course, as he checks the clock. Both teams had their chances to break the tie through this third period until Barber did it with the big goal, followed rather quickly by Dupont's goal. And it's 4-2 Flyers. One minute and 20 seconds as play resumes here in the regulation time with the Flyers have a two, two goal lead as Dupont up at center over the blue line. Dupont takes the shot right on and Jobert stopped that. 108 remaining. Here's a chance now for Schmatz. Schmatz coming to center right for the Bruins. Back out there and Dupont and Sweat. And the puck goes to Clark. Less than a minute to go. The puck out at center right. Badney over for Orr. Orr back to Badney. 50 seconds left. 4 to 2 for the Philadelphia Flyers. Austin keeps the puck in. Goes to the corner. Shepard. Covered by Busick. 40 seconds. Allen, the Flyers with Clark. Bring it out the center. A long shot over for Flett. Bill Flett gets there. It goes back in the net. He centered it. And it was tapped by McLeish in midair and, and just missed the corner. Back, back to Watson. 22 seconds left. It's McLeish back in the net. Adney cleared it out. 16 seconds. 15. And it's shot right back in again. Adney with 11 seconds. Hit Clark with it. Clark goes back. Six seconds. Five. Goes back in. Flyers 30 by the Boston Bruins 30 from the Philadelphia Spectrum the Stanley Cup playoff.